I'm on. Oh, I'm on. Okay, great. Welcome, everyone. <laughs> Thank you for coming tonight. I'd like to call to order this session of the Tacoma Park City Council. Will the clerk please call the roll? Mayor Stewart? Here. Councilmember Kovar? Here. Councilmember Mayo? Councilmember Qureshi? Councilmember Siemens? Present. Councilmember Smith? Here. Councilmember Schultz? Here. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for coming tonight. Um, this is a, a, a special uh, evening and city council meeting. We do these meetings sometimes outside of our regular chamber in the community center on Maple Avenue um, to make sure that we're getting to different parts of the city. And tonight, uh, in a few moments, we will be recognizing Immigrant Heritage Month. Uh, but before we get to that uh, this evening, we have a public hearing on the qualities and characteristics of a police chief. Um, as many people know, uh, our, the city management is in the process of working with the city council to identify priorities and establish goals for our police department and to determine the qualities and characteristics that are most important to consider as we begin recruiting for a new police chief. Um, just to let folks know, we do have a survey that was launched earlier this week. Um, if you'd like to go on the uh, Tacoma Park website and take that survey, we have it in both English and Spanish. And so if people uh, would like to take the survey themselves or, and pass it on to other community members, we'd appreciate that. The purpose of... Did I lose? No, no, I'm good. Okay. The purpose of tonight's public hearing is to give members of the public an opportunity to share their thoughts on the qualities and characteristics they hope to see in the next police chief. Um, in addition to the public hearing tonight, as I mentioned, we have the survey. On Monday evening, we held um, a special council meeting to uh, discuss the process moving forward and establish goals for our police department. We will be having uh, another meeting um, next Thursday evening in the Azalea Room in the Community Center if people would like to attend that as well. So there's many different ways to um, kind of plug into this process and provide your opinion on the next police chief. Um, so with that, I will just ask, is there anyone who would like to speak tonight um, during the public hearing regarding the qualities and characteristics of the next police chief? Okay. Do you come to the microphone? Go ahead. You do, can you just line? You can just line up like we normally do in meetings. They're very shy. I know everyone's very shy tonight. Um, and since we don't have our normal timer, which I know will make some people very sad, um, I'm just going <laughs> to keep time on my phone um, and kind of give you a heads up uh, when your three minutes are coming to an end. Okay. okay. Uh, I'm Jim DeLuigi. I live in Hillwood Manor. Um, just one simple thing that I would uh, like to look for, which is someone who's proponent of community policing. Um, we've had that past years uh, where we've had uh, community folks occasionally walk around the neighborhood, uh, keep an eye on what's going on, and have a direct dialogue with police frequently. Uh, we have that pretty well right now with individual officers. But someone that would really be a proponent and really set a strong program for it would be important to us. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak to this this evening? Ms. Wallace? Hi, I'm Elizabeth Wallace. Um, I listened to the first one and a half hours of the June 19 meeting on YouTube. Uh, that you had, um, and I understand it was precipitated by, at least in part, by request from Councilman Siemens for the council to step back and define the mission and goals of the police department before deciding what the characteristics are that we should be looking for in a police chief. So thank you for that. Um, I'm so glad that Chief Magnus from Tucson, Arizona, formerly from Richmond, California, had a chance to speak to our city council. If you guys have a chance to look at it, it's really a good talk. Oh, you were there. <laughs> um, and because um, he said it all. Yes. Um, so uh, for those who didn't attend or don't want to watch a two-hour program, uh, may I paraphrase. Uh, the leader we look, ought to look for is someone whose main priority is to protect the constitutional rights of every resident or person transiting through our town, who has the courage to do the right thing at the risk of being unpopular, even if it's unpopularity with the Fraternal Order of Police, or in our case, the UFCW who understands that change, while uncomfortable and sometimes disruptive, has to be constant. Because, as he said, if you rest on your laurels, you're already losing ground. From my perspective, that might include working with the city to come up with a civilian review board that fits Tacoma Park under Maryland Law 2016. 
Brian Kaur of NACOL, the National Association for Civil, Civilian Oversight of Law Enforcement, has already expressed a willingness to come and speak to our city council and manager. A chief who listens to understand, not just to come up with a reply, especially not a defensive one, who is willing to apologize to the community on behalf of past wrongs and current transgressions, not just his, but his staff's. From my perspective, that might include adding a category between complaints and compliments, mediation, a chance for an officer to understand how they spoke or dealt with a situation might have done more harm than good, even when their intent was good, but especially when it wasn't. A chief who has a track record of challenging his or herself to initiate project, tra projects on or off the job that were for the greater good. A chief who promotes officers getting out of the car. To get to, I've heard that so many times from good police officers. To get to know the community members when there's no crisis unfolding. A, cop, uh, a chief who's not afraid to make people get out of their comfort zone. If you love being a traffic cop, don't count on that being what you're going to do for the rest of your life <laughs> under our new chief. <laughs> um, a chief that knows that they are the frontline persons who can, uh, who can teach their staff that they are the frontline persons who can help people get help from other agencies. From my perspective, I was involved many, many years ago in a domestic abuse situation involving alcohol of the abuser. It would have been great to be referred to Al-Anon for the friend, friends, family and friends of people with addictions. Anyway, I, I have a very, no time left, so take risks with new ideas. As he said, implement strategies that will involve community members in collaboration and uh, work across uh, the borders and don't tolerate transgressions by police officers when they're off duty. But most important, we too are the guardians of our police force. And we want a police chief who takes care of them, their training, their health, and most especially because there is police informed, tra tra there is trauma on the police force, their mental well being. Thank you. Thanks, Ms. Wallace. And I'd love to get your notes. <laughs> Thank you. Anyone else like to speak uh, during our public hearing this evening? Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Hello, um, my name is Thomas Nephew. I live in Ward 1. Uh, um, I'm here to again express my interest, uh, this, uh, and that of many other Tacoma Park activists in Montgomery County Civil Rights Coalition, MCCRC, especially in its police reform committee, in this recruitment process. Uh, we've welcomed that the city is putting special emphasis on racial equity. Uh, and that the pros prospectus the city circulated made special mention of our city's sanctuary and voting policies. We also welcome the survey being sent around by the city uh, um, and uh, believe that the uh, questions are useful. They're sometimes a little vague, but uh, uh, You've got to start somewhere with, with <laughs> surveys like this, so I appreciate the difficulty of, of constructing a, a survey. Um, there are a lot of ways that a police chief and her or his department can have a profound impact on the rights and liberties of Tacoma Park residents and on the trust we all want to have that they're aware of those rights and liberties. The issues can range from things as simple as transparency in posting department policies to processes of equipment procurement, attitudes on the use of force versus de-escalation, so-called countering violent extremism programs, and also working together on new opportunities for police ac accountability, such as civilian tri uh, trial board participation when that happens, um, and civilian review boards, as has already been discussed. Um, but mainly in guaranteeing the rights of free speech, due process, and freedom from unwarranted searches and seizures, uh, and equal treatment under the law for all Americans. Uh, as I wrote to you before, personnel can be policy. Personnel is policy. So we would like to learn what potential uh, police department chiefs think now about specific issues like those I've listed and what kind of dialogue they would welcome as such issues arise. So I look forward, and all of us look forward, to working with all of you to play as 
constructive and collaborative a role as possible in meeting and selecting our next police chief. Thanks. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Lori Chakruti, and I'm uh, live on Ethan Allen Avenue in Ward 2. And I want to um, really thank you. So just to back up a little bit, I think I had a chance to participate in the work session, but want to go on record with a couple of other things. Um, I've done work across the state and in different parts of the country on police and community relations, and specifically on giving residents real voice in how policing happens in their community. And so I really want to commend you for um, the process that you've built, even to get as much community voice into determining what kind of a chief you want. I think you're starting to model what it is that we want to build in Tacoma Park. And what I think we want to build in Tacoma Park is community-led policing. And so community policing is often highlighted as the interactions, um, regular, often fun interactions, the cookouts, walking the streets, building those relationships. But community-led policing specifically is giving residents real voice in determining what policing looks like. And that ranges from um, residents having a voice in um, the training of officers so that those officers learn about this community and our, our diverse community. It has, um, it's about how complaints are handled. It can play out in terms of mediation. And it can play out in terms of um, collaborative problem solving between community members and police officers in addressing um, both broader policies as well as specific problem areas in the community. And so I'm hoping that the new chief really embraces that approach. And I think the fact that you all have taken that approach in building the process to bring in a new chief is really good modeling for what it is we're looking for. So I want to commend you for that and encourage you to keep going that direction. Thank you. Would anyone else like to speak during the public hearing this evening? Okay, then we will move on. Um, there are no additional agenda items for tonight's meeting. Um, looking at the calendar moving forward, um, starting on Sunday, many of us on the City Council will be attending the Maryland Municipal League Summer Conference. Um, so there will be no regular Wednesday night meeting, Council meeting next week. However, there is a Wednesday night meeting because there just always needs to be a meeting <laughs> on Wednesday evening. Um, the Housing and Economic Development Strategic Planning Listening Session will be taking place at 7.30 p.m. on Wednesday, June 28th. And so there's more information on the website, um, but if people have time on 7.30 p.m. in the Community Center Auditorium to attend that, um, that's happening. And then, as I mentioned before, on Thursday, June 29th, uh, we will continue the conversation about uh, the process and criteria for selecting a police chief. Um, that meeting will occur at 7.30 in the Azalea Room and is open to the public. Returning to our regular meetings um, will happen on July 12th. We will not be meeting the week of 4th of July. Um, so our regular council meetings will uh, happen again on Wednesday, July 12th. We'll be in the auditorium at the community center. That evening, we'll have a first reading ordinance authorizing an FY 2018 budget amendment, a single reading ordinance awarding contract services for a food pantry program, and a resolution providing for the appointments to committees. <coughs> Our work sessions that evening will be a discussion of the proposed amendment to the city code for operating wheelchairs and bicycles on sidewalks, a payment in lieu of taxes for MHP and Victory Housing, a discussion of development partner proposals for the Tacoma Park Recreation Center, and a discussion of our uh, legislative action request um, for the uh, upcoming state legislat legislative session uh, in Annapolis. And Council Member Smith is taking the lead on that this year on our MML legislative action request. So if members of the council have things they want to talk to him prior to the July 12th meeting, they should do that. Um, the following week, on Wednesday, July 19th, um, our voting items will be the first reading ordinance amending the city code uh, regarding the um, conversation we'll have about operating wheelchairs and bicycles on sidewalks. We'll also have a resolution authorizing submission of legislative action requests um, following up on the conversation the week prior. We have a first reading ordinance authorizing a, um, execution of a payment in lieu of taxes for MHP and Victory Housing. We also have a single reading ordinance awarding a contract for construction of Ethan Allen streetscape improvements, a resolution on police department goals, and a resolution on amending our police department complaint process. 
And then the last voting item is a second reading ordinance authorizing FY 2018 um, budget amendment. Uh, our next meeting will be Wednesday, July 26th. At that time, we'll have a, a second reading ordinance amending the code regarding the wheelchairs and bicycles on sidewalks, a second reading ordinance authorizing execution of payment in lieu of taxes for MHP and Victory Housing, and then a resolution providing for the City Council's summer recess. And then we are off until September 6th. So that is the schedule for the City Council meetings for the rest of the summer. Um, now, uh, we are going to recognize June as Immigrant Heritage Month, um, and as we <coughs> did last year, we have a proclamation. I will read that to everyone. Um, recognizing June as Immigrant Heritage Month in Tacoma Park. Whereas, it, as a nation of immigrants, the United States of America has benefited from the culture, ideas, skills, and abilities of those who have come here to work, to learn, and to find freedom and shelter. And whereas in Tacoma Park, we have many first and second generation immigrants as our neighbors. And whereas the city has a long history of welcoming immigrants and working to build a caring, inclusive, and strong community which celebrates its diversity. And whereas this year, as more immigrants fear deportation and others may be viewed with mistrust, it is more important than ever to maintain our Tacoma Park values. Now, therefore, I, Kate Stewart, Mayor of the City of Tacoma Park, Maryland, on behalf of the Council, residents, and staff, proclaim June as Immigrant Heritage Month in Tacoma Park and encourage all to come together and recommit ourselves to being an inclusive and welcoming community that upholds the right of all people to live with dignity and respect. All right. Now we'll take um, public comments on Immigrant Heritage Month. Um, we are joined this evening by a number of organizations that are working in the community. Um, I'd first like to ask uh, Nancy Withbro from the Community Foundation. Nancy is the VP of Philanthropic Engagement, and she's going to update us on some things the Community Foundation is doing. Thank you for inviting me to be here tonight. And in addition to being here in my official capacity at the Community Foundation, I am a resident of Tacoma Park. I live on Ethan Allen in Ward 2, and I'm really glad to be here with you all. Uh, so the Community Foundation for the National Capital Region's mission is to advance equity, access, and opportunity throughout the region. And we do that by connecting donors who care with nonprofits that are doing good work in the community. Um, we're the largest grant maker in the region, and in our 43-year history, we've granted over a billion dollars to over 8,000 nonprofits throughout our community. And as of next Monday, our name will be changing to the Greater Washington Community Foundation. So when you hear that, it's the same group, new name. So I'm, Kate invited me to speak tonight about the Resilience Fund, which is uh, a, a fund that we've established in the wake of the presidential election and as the federal policy climate is changing. And what we heard last fall and around the inauguration time was that donors in our region know that there are local nonprofits doing really good work to help people that are being impacted as the federal climate is changing, both the rhetoric and the policy, but they don't necessarily know which of those nonprofits to give to, particularly if they have been giving in certain issue areas and now they might be caring about other issues and at the moment there's particular attention on the needs of immigrants and refugees. And so that's really our job at the Community Foundation because we work with those nonprofits really closely and we have funds established with us where we can pool resources from donors across the region or within a specific community who really care and who together want to come together to have an impact. And I see that not only as efficient way to channel resources to groups that are working um, on behalf of people in need in the community, but also as a way of showing those nonprofits and the people that they serve that a whole group of people and organizations are coming together and really standing by them and supporting them with their resources. And so we, in partnership with the Eugene and Agnes E. Meyer Foundation, have established a fund we're calling the Resilience Fund. And we've intentionally named that a very positive name about really wanting to help our community stay strong and resilient during these challenging times. And to date, we've raised about $300,000. Um, and so here's how the fund works. So what what we do is that we are soliciting funds from individuals, from organizations, government entities of any size. We've received gifts of $10, and we've received a gift of $50,000, and everything in between. 
and donors, if they wish, may restrict their gift to be used in a specific jurisdiction. So it could be Tacoma Park, it could be Montgomery County, it could be the state of Maryland. That We leave that opportunity open for donors. And then anyone who or any entity that contributes $50,000 or more can have a seat on the steering committee. And we've designed it that way so that there's a small group of people and organizational representatives who are trying to make decisions really quickly. And they're working with our staff and the staff at the Meyer Foundation, and then as needed, bringing in experts on local issues to say, what are the nonprofits that are doing really good work so we don't have a long and complicated application process, but we're inviting proposals from organizations that are already doing excellent work, and then quickly making decisions so we can get that money back out into the community. And then our staff manages all the back office stuff. So we're recruiting donors, we're soliciting, we're sending out the acknowledgement letters, we're managing the committee process, we're keeping track of the money while it's after it's been given, and then distributing it to nonprofits in the community. And this morning, the steering committee met and will be announcing next week the first grants going out the door. So we're continuing to raise money and we're also getting money out there to do good work in the community. So We'd love for all of you who are here tonight to help spread the word about the fund. You can visit our website, thecommunityfoundation.org slash resilience fund. And even as our website and our name changes soon, that, that will still carry over to the new site in the next couple of weeks. You can also sign up on the website to stay posted as we're learning more and as we're continuing to give and see the impact of the gifts in the community. And then now that this fund is established, while right now we are very focused on immigrants and refugees and the nonprofits that are serving them, we have the vehicle created so as the Trump administration continues to do what it's going to do, um, and as other issues may come up, we have a vehicle already established to pivot as needed to health care, to other issues that may come up. Um, over the next couple of years. So we're in this for the long haul um, while also trying to be efficient and effective right away on behalf of the community. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming this evening. You're welcome. Great. All right. Um, any quick co- questions or anything? I think no. we'll check out the website. It's very clear. I got on the homepage today, and okay. it's right there, and we appreciate you being here. And since you're in the neighborhood, we can always ask you back. Yeah. So. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and next, I, uh, we have uh, Lisa Siegel, who is, uh, works with the Tacoma Park Mobilization, Immigrant, and Muslim Solidarity Committee. Good evening. Thank you, Mayor. Um, my name is Lisa Siegel, and I'm a member of the Tacoma Park Mobilization's Immigration and Muslim Solidarity Committee. All of us who volunteer on the committee are committed to the value of respecting the dignity of every human being. The Immigration and Muslim Solidarity Committee includes more than 200 people, and since TPM was formed, our legislative subcommittee worked to develop support for the Maryland Trust Act. Our Muslim Solidarity Subcommittee organized a teach-in on Islamophobia. Our Sanctuary Subcommittee has been working with CASA, ACLU, and Sanctuary DMV to expand the number of sanctuary congregations. And personally, I sit on the Direct Support Subcommittee. And I wanted to share an amazing moment that I experienced because of this committee. Eight committee members and I stood together in immigration court supporting an immigrant who had a very slim chance of winning his case. When the judge said that she would grant cancellation of removal, I realized that this man would now get a green card, rejoin his family, including nine dependents, and be able to celebrate the first birthday of his son together with his family this week. With no hope of immigration reform at the federal level, at the very least, we can show up for and support those who are facing an unjust system. We are committed to continuing this type of work to help our neighbors and strengthen our community, but we can't do it alone. We recently assisted with reuniting a Sudanese Asili family of five in the area and are currently working to help them find appropriate affordable housing. This family has been welcomed by the residents of Tacoma Park, but may end up living somewhere else because the barriers to find affordable housing here are too great. Pathways to employment are another great need amongst immigrant families. We are grateful for your recent resolution urging landlords to welcome refugees, but what's the next step? 
can a full-time position be created to welcome immigrants and refugees and assist them in job and housing searches? If not, can the city website house a database of housing and job search resources? We have a long way to go in Tacoma Park before immigrants can settle down here with ease. Besides being a member of this committee, I am also the president of Rolling Terrace PTA. Many undocumented Rolling Terrace parents list their number one concern as keeping their children safe if they are detained or deported by ICE. We hope that you will support legislation in 2018 by State Senator Will Smith to allow a parent to designate a caregiver in advance of such an emergency. We also hope that the city will enthusiastically support any 2018 Maryland state legislative items that foster community trust. We are also curious about whether a city ordinance is forthcoming to forbid city involvement in any effort to build a registry that records individuals, religion, race, etc. And finally, we'd like to request your support for a legal assistance fund for immigrants facing deportation. A huge number of immigrants go through deportation proceedings without attorneys. Legal, rep legal representation could make a huge difference in the outcome of many people's cases. In closing, we thank you for demonstrating the values of respect for human dignity and thank the mayor for her proclamation. And we call on you to work with us and others to further this mission through action. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. All right. Um, next, we have um, some representatives from Ayuda who are here. I apologize. My uh, paper speech seems to have walked away from me. Um, okay. So all I have is my phone. <laughs> yes. um, but I'd like to thank the Tacoma Park City Council and you, Mayor Stewart, um, today for inviting us here to say a few words. My name is Mary Stoney, and I am a paralegal with Ayuda. Um, I'm with the Domestic Violence and Sexual Assault Program at Ayuda. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Mary, I'm, can I answer your question? Can yeah. you step closer to oh, the mic? I Sorry, it, it echoes in here yeah. a lot. Thank you very much. I apologize. Um, for those of you who don't know Ayuda, we are a nonprofit organization that serves immigrants in the Washington, D.C. area. Our clients come from many different countries and language backgrounds, including the Latino and Hispanic community in particular. Uh, for over 40 years, Ayuda has helped approximately 100,000 uh, immigrants from 104 different countries overcome obstacles so that they can su succeed and thrive in, in their communities in the United States. This past year alone, we served approximately 5,000 individuals directly through our services and also through our outreach efforts. Uh, we meet the needs of immigrants in the area by providing legal immigration help, um, legal uh, domestic violence and family law help as well. We also do uh, case management and therapy for survivors of domestic violence, sexual assault, stalking, and trafficking. And we also have language interpretation services that serve the greater Washington, D.C. area. All of our direct service staff are bilingual in both Spanish and English. For clients who are the victims of domestic violence, sexual assault, and stalking, we offer a walk-in clinic where clients can walk into our program and it's all low barrier so that they can receive safety planning, crisis intervention, help obtaining protective orders that same day. They can even speak with a lawyer that same day. Through my work at Ayuda and Beyond, I've come to know our immigrant clients as some of the most strong and resilient people I've ever met. Many of our clients have faced horrors in their home countries or even in the, the comfort of their own homes. But what has stood out the most is how, when faced with obstacle after obstacle, these clients will stand right back up and keep working and trying for both themselves and for their families. And I feel truly lucky to be able to work with these individuals every day and to help them locate resources to empower themselves. Ayuda has some upcoming events which I'd like to share with you all and which I would um, love your support uh, in our efforts. Uh, first, we have several immigration cl clinics coming up uh, that are walk-in clinics at the end of July and August. We also have a uh, family preparedness clinic that's coming up later this month. Um, if you are interested in those um, services yourself, or if you know someone who may be interested, um, referring, our referring people to those clinics um, is, is what we would ask of you. Um, we are also looking for volunteers uh, at this time, especially in, in the current climate. Um, we are trying to mobilize the community in any way that we can. Uh, we have a volunteer and outreach coordinator, Laura Cantania, who is available and who is wanting to take on more people in order to help help our community. 
We have the uh, welcome breakfast that we do every year at Hamilton Live in downtown DC, um, and that will be on September 20th. We're looking for volunteers, or if you just want to come enjoy breakfast and celebrate our clients with us, um, we would be more than happy to have you. Uh, we're so pleased to be able to celebrate Immigrant Heritage Month and the individuals who make this country great with you all. We're lucky to have supportive local government and organizations in Tacoma Park, like the City Council, especially in these times of fear and uncertainty. It's true what they say, we are truly a nation of immigrants, and this is a time to celebrate our cultural diversity. So thank you all so much again, and Great. thank you for your support. Great. Thank you, Mary, and please send us the information um, on that. Yes, Great. Also, um, I don't know if there's other representatives from other organizations. Good evening, I'm Linda Rabin. I live on Lincoln Avenue in Ward 2. And I'm a member of the Tacoma Park Welcoming Group for Syrian Families. This group has been in existence for about 18 months, and we're very grateful for the help and support that we've gotten from several city council members, including Rizzi Qureshi, Terry Siemens, and Peter Kovar. Um, recent activities include the following. We've received a small grant from Adelphi Friends Meeting, which will be used to give uh, direct assistance to Syrian refugee families. Um, we have raised funds from uh, members and others to pay rent for a family that was facing eviction from the place where they were staying. And um, also other individuals have given grants at various times to provide emergency assistance. Uh, a family, a Syrian refugee family of four and a half people because the mother is pregnant, uh, has resettled to the Tacoma Park area thanks to outreach efforts by members of our committee. And uh, they were found affordable housing. And we hope to continue to support and mentor this family as they settle in. We are also putting together housing kits for families, and these will be distributed through the International Rescue Committee in Silver Spring. They are one of two local resettlement agencies. And finally, we um, will have a booth at the Tacoma Park Street Festival in October, and several refugee families will be selling homemade goods there uh, to help them start a business with the proceeds. Um, we hope to continue looking for uh, various kinds of help for Syrian refugee families, but as has already been mentioned, lack of affordable housing in Tacoma Park is a big obstacle to helping refugees resettle here. Um, so we hope that um, City Council will pay attention to this problem and take various measures to encourage landlords to rent affordable housing to refugee families. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else? Yes. Good evening, everyone. We are employees from Tacoma Park Co-op, mm -hmm. and it's an honor to be part of this month's immigrant heritage. Mm -hmm. To have a day such as this set aside to recognize immigrants and what they are doing in this great nation is humbling and comforting. When we talk about immigrants, TPSS has a great representation of immigrants, mm -hmm. a small organization of 40 employees with 20 different with employees from 20 different countries. As we can see, we have employees from Cameroon, Cape Verde, Colombia, Democratic Republic of Congo, El Salvador, Eritrea, Ethiopia, Ghana, Guatemala, Haiti, Honduras, India, Ireland, Namibia, Senegal, Sierra Leone, Somalia, Tanzania, Tibet, and USA. This is a place that develops the talent of individuals and builds character and creates opportunity for people to excel. I might say, until I joined the TPSS family, 
I was able to stand in front of a crowd like this and talk. And this is actually my first time, and I, I think I'm not doing bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's a place that plays a vital role in the community. Our customers are not only shoppers, our customers are family. They come in and they don't want to leave. TPSS pay 100% dental, medical, vision for all employees, as well as giving them $4,000 word of debit card for other medical expenses. TPSS is a trailblazer, we will say. A small business that is helping build and promote local businesses. A small business that is helping feed the homeless and needy in society a small build business that is helping in its own way to protect and sustain the environment for future generations. As employees and immigrants, we are uncomfortable and concerned now as to how the Janshin project will affect our work and livelihood. We thank you for the council for the good work you are doing, and we stand on behalf of all the employees and say that, do you everything in your power to save this great organization because it's really impacting lives and the community at large hugely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do you want to yeah. um, I'd just like to uh, thank you and, and the TPSS co-op for all the uh, many food donations that you give to our most vulnerable neighbors here in Tacoma mm -hmm. Park. And uh, it's not just the co-op doing that, but I see each of you multiple times a week. Uh, yeah. And I thank you for your work in that. Thank, thank you. Thank you. And before we go, I'm Eugenia from Ghana. I am Lily from Eritrea. Hussein from Tanzania. Pagan from Tibet. Christopher from Tanzania. Merci from Ethiopia. Thank you very much. All right, is there anyone else who would like to speak uh, regarding Immigrant Heritage Month? Get down, yeah. Yeah, I, I'll be brief. I just wanted to uh, tell the council and also people here that on Monday, Rockville passed the Fostering mm -hmm. Community Trust Act, which is a uh, an ordinance that is similar to Tacoma Parks that. Uh, keeps the police and city officials and city employees from uh, inquiring into immigration status. And so I just wanted to let folks here know about that, and uh, we were very pleased to be part of organizing for and advocating that um, at Montgomery County Civil Rights Coalition. And I just ask that you uh, congratulate the council there and work with them if there's a way to help them out as they uh, navigate the, the new ordinance and the new uh, situation. It was a, uh, unfortunately a, a, a narrower vote than we had hoped, but uh, I, so I think that convincing some of the uh, people there that this was, a, was and is a great idea would be helpful. So thanks very much. Great. Excuse me. Yeah, yeah. Um, Mr. Nephew, if you have a, a summary of the Rockville legislation or any sort of analysis of it you could share, that would be wonderful to see. I'll, uh, I'll send the, the documents yeah. and the pro and con arguments that we've been experiencing Thank you. about yeah. that. Thanks. I heard they had two hours of public comment Monday night. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's where I was Monday night. All right. uh, so uh, I can tell you all about it, but it would take two hours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right. Um, we'll move on now to uh, public comments on our voting items, and I'm going to go back to being a timekeeper on this. Um, our first, first voting item tonight is the second reading ordinance authorizing bond issuance under Maryland Local Government Infrastructure <coughs> Program to finance the library and community center renovations and roadway and streetscape improvements. Um, so would you like to speak to that? <coughs> just state your name, and then um, when it gets close to three minutes, I'll just give you a wave. Uh, my name is Miriam Shapiro, and I think you know by now I'm a member of the Tacoma Park Friends of the Library Board. I just came up today not to ask you for anything, <laughs> but rather to offer my heartfelt thanks to you all, to the council for supporting our wonderful community resource and voting to fund the renovation. And I also want to thank city management 
um, for all the work it has done uh, to make this a reality going forward. Um, this renovation will not only fix the overwork building's many dire problems from deteriorating HVAC systems to noncompliance with ADA laws, et cetera, it will also ensure that the library has the space and design needed to effectively serve our community into the years ahead, from books to quiet reading areas to programming space to new media and research technology. And it will do so in a uniquely Tacoma Park way. It won't necessarily be the glitziest library in the county, but it will be the best, and we have you to thank. Thank you. Any other comments on this voting item? Okay, then we'll move on to our next voting item. Tonight is the second reading ordinance authorizing execution of a contract for services to perform the annual audit of the city's financial statements and pre prepare the comprehensive annual financial report. Any public comments on that? And the next item is a consent agenda tonight. In the consent agenda, we have a single reading ordinance approving the FY 2018 community grants, as well as appointments to the Arts and Humanities Committee, the Recreation Committee, and the Safe Roadways Committee. Any public comments on our consent agenda item? All right, now we'll move to general public comments. So if you have public comments on anything that we haven't covered yet, <laughs> please come to the mic. No? Mr. Sherwood? Yeah. I <laughs> Good evening, uh, Mayor Stewart and members of the City Council and uh, Acting City Manager and City Clerk. My name is Wayne Sherwood and I live at 218 Grand Avenue. Thank you for this opportunity to comment tonight. I would like to comment on the future redevelopment of the New Hampshire Avenue Recreation Center where we're meeting now. The redevelopment process for this rec center offers one of the most exciting opportunities that has come along in this city for years, in my opinion. I am particularly interested in the opportunities here for addressing issues of racial inequities and economic justice as a part of this process. I'd like to focus my comments tonight upon the issues of racial and economic equity and justice. Planning for the future of the Rec Center will provide many wonderful and exciting new opportunities to do this. Early last year, the City Council expressed its interest in issues of youth success, racial and economic equity, affordable housing, and addressing the needs of areas of the city that may have been underserved in the past. Your city council sponsored a forum on youth success. There are substantial disparities in outcomes among students in the Montgomery County Public Schools. More needs to be done to reach out to youth who are in difficulty in school, who have poor grades, poor attendance records, behavioral problems, or are considered potential dropouts. The school system has difficulty in reaching out to and helping kids after school hours, especially when kids go back to homes and neighborhoods that are not close to the schools. At the Council Forum, it was recommended that the City of Tacoma Park talk more with the kids who participate in the City's recreation programs, try to identify some of their needs, and then try to connect them with various helps that might be available to them and their families. I believe that the principal purpose of the future rec center should be to add more activities for the kids who already come here, for example, more computers, a quiet room to study and do homework, more rec center hours, especially on weekends, and more interactive games, such as a pool table, air hockey table, and foosball table. Of course, activities that are already popular, such as basketball and step practice, should be maintained and enhanced. Ask the kids what they would like. In addition, there should be rooms that can be used by outside organizations to offer services for youth and their families, such as educational counseling, language training, job preparation and job search, youth and family wellness clinics, and cooking classes. I strongly support redeveloping the rec center in its current location. I also hope that the city can add some affordable housing if feasible. Communities across the country are struggling to achieve greater racial and economic justice and equity the city of Tacoma Park has a great opportunity to be a national leader right here at this site, and I hope that the city council will do as much as possible to ensure that the revitalized rec center site will help to achieve these important goals. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other public comments this evening? Good 
Good evening. Ken Flemmer from the Avenus Community Service Center over on Sligo Avenue, just outside Tacoma Park City Limits. I come here tonight, I want to share some good news because uh, you've heard a lot of good news tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, about 10 days ago, it was the Catalog for Philanthropy of the Greater Washington Area uh, accepted us as one of the nonprofits that they will list. And their, their press release said that ACS was one of the best in the area. And we feel really good about that. There was about 200 that they reviewed. They only accepted 77, I think it was. And they did quite a rigorous review. I noticed that they even went and checked my LinkedIn profile. <laughs> so uh, it, it was uh, quite rigorous. Uh, I want to share with you a photo. I'll let the people back here see it first. Um, our food pantry last, the beginning of last week, uh, was is stocked as nice as it's ever been. And um, we've been getting about four pallets of fresh vegetables and fruit and things uh, just about every week here. So that's really enhanced uh, the amount of food that, that we have to give away. And um, right now, our strongest training program that has the most interest I know it's lagged. There's been a lot of chatter. The city gave us a, a grant on a reimbursement basis for Tacoma Park residents. We now have six enrolled. And the last cohort that just graduated two, three weeks ago, one of the young people got a job without t taking the, ex the certification exam that's available afterwards at Walmart in their IT, IT department. So we're really excited about that. It's so popular right now that we've started a day and an evening class. So instead of offering it once a week, we're, over the summer we're going to offer it twice a week. So I just wanted to share some good news about some of the work that's being done in this community to build it up. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Any other public comments this evening? No. I will now turn it over to council comments. Any council comments tonight? Councilmember Kovar. Thank you, Mayor. I wanted to mention a few things. One, um, there's been some discussion of some criminal activity that took, took place over a period of several weeks, including most recently an assault on Tulip Avenue outside the um, Tacoma Park Child Development Center, which is uh, housed in the Presbyterian Church uh, complex there. And um, that series of events served as the catalyst. There were other incidents as well, including some in the park behind Piney Branch Elementary School, served as the catalyst for a meeting that we had last night at the church. I think there were about 75 uh, people from the community there. The mayor was there. We had Acting Chief Collington and several other representatives of the um, police department there, and uh, as well as representatives of the church and, and the school, the, the Child Development Center. And there was a lot of excellent uh, discussion. I thought the police did a very good job presenting and talking about the steps that they've been taking to up their patrols uh, in the area where those incidents had occurred, and also the additional uh, collaboration and coordination they're doing with the county in the park area behind uh, Piney Branch Elementary School. So nothing like that just solves the problem, but b because this had been raised, I thought it was an important step toward uh, working with the community. And since we're talking a lot about police now, it's a good example of the kind of uh, cooperation that can happen. So that's one thing. Secondly, I periodically have been referring to the ongoing discussions that have been taking place with the uh, community and Montgomery College around the college's plans for additional construction or renovation of the existing buildings in North Tacoma. And I think people are aware we went through a process of uh, three community conversations which came to an end earlier this month. And uh, through that process, I think a lot of greater understanding was reached in terms of the options for construction. and. Really, uh, through that process, it was whittled down to two uh, potential remaining sites for the college's new math science building. And uh, both of them are along Fenton Avenue. One closer, for, uh, I'm just going to summarize, is closer to the existing newer Nunnally Student Center building, and the other closer to the intersection of Tacoma Avenue and Fenton Avenue, for those who know it, fairly close to what was called Jackie Park and is now called uh, Bell Ziegler Park. And so I'm pleased that um, the mayor um, 
and I were able to send a letter recently to Dr. Pollard, the head of Montgomery College, after we heard from several community groups in both Silver Spring and Tacoma Park. Those groups advocated for the siting from the previous master plan that would be closer to the Nunnally building and farther from the residential area. We sent a similar letter uh, endorsing that. The process still has to go forward and ultimately the college has the final say, but I thought people might be interested in knowing that that's where that stands. And then, uh, and I believe that letter is posted on, on the website as well under Montgomery College. Mm -hmm. And then just two questions for Mr. Dan Weber, if you don't mind. I always have a, a, a couple relating to things that are going on. Um, one work has continued on filling in the strip along Tulip Avenue, but I would just love to get a, uh, a time frame on that. And secondly, there's some uncertainty about, there are some tree boxes for Old Town, the Old Town commercial area, and some uncertainty as to whether the city staff or an outside contractor is going to do that work, put them together and install them. And I've gotten some queries about that from uh, business owners in the area. Just would like to get a sense for that and for the timing as well. Okay, Thank I'll you. look into it. Thanks a lot. Great. Any other council comments? Councilmember Schultz. Yes. Uh, first, are you going to comment on the mayor's lunch? I could, but you you can do it. You you teed it up. Go ahead. <laughs> well, uh, this uh, this uh, is this tomorrow, is it not? No, T Friday. Today's Wednesday. Today's okay. Wednesday. See, that's <laughs> that's a bad symptom. Uh, this Friday, the mayor is having holding the second of a s series that's going to run for a while mm -hmm. of lunch with the mayor, which is. Uh, a movable, a movable feast um, along New Hampshire Avenue in the Crossroads area. And so the next one is the day after tomorrow at noon at uh, Papuceria El Comolito. Did I get that right? Oh, very good. All right. You've been practicing. <laughs> Can you tell? <laughs> uh, so I, I, will, I will be there. Uh, not that I have a big affection for papooses, but, you know, one can learn. Uh, so the, it's open to everyone, um, and, uh, and and hopefully we will. Uh, and I think we're going to have Mr. Rimberto Rodriguez. Yeah, Rimberto is going to be with us. Is mm -hmm. going to be there, be our guest there. Uh, all questions are on the table at any time. Uh, we're hoping that small business owners in the in the neighborhood will particularly come and join in the conversation and. Uh, uh, listen and also comment. So that's one thing. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing is that I've, some, some of you, if not most of you, already know that I've formally and publicly announced that I'm not going to be running for re-election uh, this November, uh, the election's November 7th. I wanted to make that announcement uh, this month because I know it takes time for people to get used to the idea that maybe, gosh, I ought to think about trying to fill this slot. And I hope that there will be a, uh, a, uh, a, a good group of, of quality candidates that the Ward 6 residents uh, can choose from. And um, I just wanted to, to say uh, that um, if, anybody, if anybody is mulling over the idea uh, thoroughly undecided or whatever, and you want to get some feedback on what the heck is it like, you know, what, how do you do this and that, and I, will, I promise to, meet, to be willing to meet privately, confidentially, and to give you honest answers, candid answers. I'm not going to do what the previous council member who I replaced did to me who said, I don't ever get calls from constituents. <laughs> And we only meet once every two weeks. And I said, oh, gee. <laughs> so uh, the, the reason that I'm, I'm choosing to do this uh, is purely uh, personal. And uh, I will have been, I'm in my eighth year serving on the city council, something that I had never even contemplated doing to begin with. And, um, and uh, but there are just 
I, I realize that as a the part of me just doesn't like to stay with anything much more than seven, eight, or nine years. And it's not that I'm burnt out, because I actually love doing this job. It's a lot of fun. It's just that there's so many other things in, that I want to be able to do, uh, and my wife and I want to be able to do together, that I just need to clear the decks and be able to get on with those sorts of things in my life. And I think it's time as well, and this is important, to have a change. I think it's important after this many years that there be uh, another, another person with the fresh ideas and fresh energy and, and a sharper mind who can uh, uh, help represent the, uh, the, the residents of, of Ward 6. Um, I w also want to assure that while I may sound or may be, be a lame duck, in fact, I am not going to be acting in any way lame. I, I tend to go, be going out with my fists flying. In fact, I sent a very stern, almost nasty letter to the Washington Suburban Sanitation Commission this week asking why in the blankety blank they have not bothered uh, ap after about a year to begin repaving the streets in New Hampshire gardens. It's absolutely unconscionable and it's ridiculous. It's absurd and there's just no darn reason. And I told him that I don't know who you think your customers are, but clearly they certainly are not us. And I copied that to our entire Annapolis delegation, trying to get this organization off its butt to do something that's not that hard to do. So uh, I will, I promise that even after I'm off the city council, I want to stay involved with city matters. I've talked a little bit with the mayor about that and uh, we'll see how that shakes out. But uh, I ain't going too far away. Thank you. Thank you. Any other council comments this evening? All right. I have a couple of um, updates. Um, first, I want to um, extend my thanks to um, Melanie Isis, um, who is here, and Jesse Carpenter, our city clerk, um, and all the city TV staff who make it possible for us to hold our meetings here. Uh, in particular, Melanie um, and Jesse helped to uh, set up our refreshments earlier tonight. Um, we had food from Caribbean Palace that is just down the street. Um, and so I think there's some food out there, so hopefully people can have some of it if we get a little boring in here. Um, <laughs> please take a break. Uh, so I just want to thank them so much, and um, my apologies for not thanking them when more people were still here, um, but thank you so much this evening. Um, and also, outside, as you leave, um, there, um, information about uh, the Gilcrest Center. Um, it's an immigration resource center here in Montgomery uh, County, um, and it provides a lot of information about different resources, housing, language, jobs, um, and uh, that immigrants um, can find useful in the county. And so there's materials um, out in where the refreshments are. Um, the other updates I want to provide folks is, um, as you know, I've talked about um, participating in the SEED workshops. Those are the Seeking Educational Equity and Diversity. Um, these workshops took place uh, two Sundays um, every month for the last four months. Uh, this is our first cohort. We were about 18 people uh, who came to together to talk about equity and diversity issues in our community. Um, we're hoping the facilitators are game for doing it again. Uh, it was a wonderful opportunity, and it was an outgrowth of the uh, unity in the community work um, that Megan Murphy, uh, myself, and Captain Collington have been working on. Um, another update on that is that um, our second youth dialogue between the police department and young people in our community uh, was held this week. Um, and we had one a couple of months ago, and this is the second dialogue to help uh, build stronger relationships between our police department and young people. Um, and as I mentioned, that uh, many of us are going to MML um, next week, uh, and I will be presenting on a panel at MML regarding our community building. And I just heard that Councilmember Schultz is also you're presenting, right, at yes. MML? And yes, I so am. We will 
be all over that panel. Um, the last thing is um, please mark your calendars. National Night Out is August 1st this year. So please spread the word. Um, it will be on Maple Avenue uh, this year because they're doing work on the field behind Piney Branch. So National Night Out is on August 1st. That's a Tuesday evening. Please spread the word. Um, okay, I think that's it for me. I will turn it over to our city manager, our acting city manager. <laughs> Am I on? No. no. Check, no. check, check. Okay. Um, the first item is one that we discussed at the last council meeting. Uh, council Member Smith had requested that staff reinstall temporary stop signs at Flower and Maplewood. Uh, Public Works crews have reinstalled those signs, um, which were in place during the Carroll Bridge, uh, Carroll Avenue Bridge um, reconstruction. Um, as the Flower Avenue Green Street project commences, Public Works staff is going to be working with our engineering consultants to determine where else along um, Flower Avenue it makes sense to install um, stop signs and other safety signage. Uh, at l the last council meeting, Councilmember Siemens asked uh, about the potholes in the library parking lot. Um, those uh, potholes are actually so bad that patching them um, will be would be a waste of time and money. Um, they actually need to, that area needs to be uh, reconstructed and resurfaced. Oh my it God. is at the very top of the list when our resurfacing contractor comes um, uh, into town um, when the fiscal year 18 funds become available. Um, it, it would be extremely expensive to have a, a contractor come out to do just that work, and so we're going um, to we're going to opt to do it as soon as we can in the new fiscal year. Thank you. Um, and I ran over those potholes today, and, and uh, I hope they get fixed very soon. Um, Councilmember Siemens also reported a couple of uh, tripping hazards on sidewalks in the vicinity of 117 Ritchie and 7620 Maple. Uh, the sidewalk repair and maintenance contractor is actually doing work in the city right now, and these, uh, these areas have been added to the punch list, so they should be taken care of before the contractor leaves the city. Thank you again. No problem. And the council member Siemens also asked um, if uh, no parking signs could be installed um, because there are parking spaces in between a crosswalk and a driveway near Maple and Ritchie that makes it hard for pedestrians to see oncoming vehicles and for vehicles um, to see pedestrians um, when cars are parked there. Um, Public Works staff will be installing uh, no parking signs in the appropriate places. Uh, we have a long uh, signage list that they're working on right now. These have been added to the list and they're um, in uh, full prep mode for the 4th of July celebrations. So um, that, those will, that work will likely uh, be done in, in uh, mid to late July. You just went from good job to excellent. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh, Councilmember Cobar had noted some concerns about the deer population at Tacoma Park. Um, I had actually asked around because I hadn't seen very many in, in recent years, and, um, and in the last few weeks, people have apparently seen quite a few deer. Um, so I did a, a little digging and found that Montgomery Park, uh, County Parks is uh, acutely aware of uh, the deer situation. Um, they actually have, um, it's, it's uh, a long recognized issue, they actually have a website uh, dedicated entirely to, um, to their deer ma management plan. Uh, it has copies of the deer management annual report and recommendations, including the latest report. It provides um, up-to-date deer impact data and a list of recommendations for the upcoming year. Um, and those recommendations are carried out by the county, state, and federal agencies as appropriate, who also work with private landowners um, to help um, uh, deal with uh, the deer population. The city manager comments has a link to, um, to that website on the Montgomery Parks web, uh, to that webpage on the Montgomery Parks website. Uh, some information to share. Uh, the mayor mentioned earlier uh, that there's now a community survey um, launched, and you can access it through the city's website. It's actually right on the home page right now, uh, pertaining to the qualities and characteristics that um, community members would like to see in the next police chief. As the mayor mentioned, uh, that survey is available in both English and Spanish. Uh, I encourage uh, everyone to take it. Um, ADA sidewalk repairs uh, will begin on Cedar next week. Um, currently, the contractor I mentioned earlier is finishing up work on Poplar and Spring, and uh, they'll be moving on to Cedar. 
In the past, this work's generated a lot of questions and concerns, um, including issues related to concrete color uh, and finishing. One important thing to note is that uh, the pavers that are currently on cedar that make up the sidewalk on a section from cedar uh, of Cedar from Tulip to Birch Avenue will not be replaced uh, with the concrete. Um, however, to avoid the current problem of settling of the pavers, uh, the contractor is going to be um, laying them on a concrete base. So they'll be temporarily removed, have a concrete base laid down, and, uh, and the pavers will be uh, placed back on them. So if folks ask what's happening to them, they're staying there, they're just trying to um, make them more structurally sound. Um, the Housing and Community Development Department will be hosting a listening session on uh, Wednesday, June 23rd. They figured if council wasn't going to be having a meeting, we've, we've got to create an opportunity for a meeting. I'm sorry, the 28th. Yes, uh, I need to correct that in my notes here. Um, it'll be at uh, 7.30 in the Community Center Auditorium. Uh, the session's intended to provide community members with an opportunity to provide input on local housing and economic development conditions and programming. Uh, basically, we're trying to solicit the same feedback that we have been through the survey, but we want to give people an opportunity to come and uh, provide uh, comments in person. Um, concurrently, there will be a Facebook Live. Dis uh, uh, it'll be filmed and uh, broadcast on Facebook Live, so members of the community who can't be present in person at that meeting will have an opportunity to um, weigh in and listen to what other people are saying via Facebook. Um, yesterday, uh, members of HCD attended the Housing and Nonprofit Developer or HAND Membership Organization's annual meeting, um, which was held in DC. Uh, apparently, it was a great event. Uh, the conference explored the theme beyond gentrification toward equitable communities. Um, there were 1,400 industry professionals there, including our own. Uh, the presentations uh, focused around changing racial and uh, the changing racial and economic landscape in the greater Washington area, um, and it gave HCD staff some insights into how other practitioners measure equity in the communities they serve around the region. And I was there, Mr. Dan Weber. It was excellent. All right, great, great. Um, I heard very positive things from our staff who were there as well. Um, and finally, just a hiring update. Uh, we have open positions, including the public work sanitation driver and HCD planning intern. As you all know, we expect to um, begin advertising for a new police chief at some point in July. Any questions for the uh, acting city manager? Yeah, I have a couple of follow-up questions. Um, on the uh, library parking lot potholes, mm -hmm. I've just never heard the argument that the, that the situation is too degraded to fix. Uh, for example, Governor Martin O'Malley was famous as mayor before he was governor for fixing all potholes in Baltimore within 48 hours, right? And no one ever said, well, we're not going to fix that one because we can't fix it some way. And the city has two state highways, excuse me. There's two potholes that are currently patched. One people may have noticed during the Jazz Fest, right, in Old Town, where mm -hmm. the asphalt goes like this. Yep. There's another one right near the junction that does the same thing. But they were still patched. They're still, they're still to a point where a car does not bottom out or pop its tire on the pothole. So... I was just going to ask if you could provide more detailed follow-up on, you know, what kind of situation really uh, leads to that and what the expected timeline is to get um, the repair in. Your, sure. your notes are, are general, but if you could get more specific. And I'll have to check in um, uh, for a more detailed answer um, with staff. Um, as I understand it, patching it will last a very short period of time before it has to be repatched again, and the uh, material used to patch it creates uh, a worse surface when it's driven over. Uh, yeah, I was just trying degrades. to understand whether patching it and repatching it and repatching it until it's fully fixed would actually be better than re reconstructing than, than and resurfacing. Than just to, you know, I, mean, I don't know if that's an option. Yeah. I can look into it further, though. And then uh, the other question is, um, I appreciate that the survey is currently in Spanish and English. But I know that um, either Amharic or French are close to third place uh, in our, um, our, our, our use of language in Tacoma Park. And so I would encourage us to try to make that survey available in one more language, um, given the importance of the police chief hiring process and the importance of reaching them. OK. Thank you. Any other questions for the acting city manager? No? All right. We will move on to our voting items then. 
Our first voting item is the second reading ordinance authorizing bond issuance under Maryland Local Government Infrastructure Program to finance library and community center renovations and roadway and streetscape improvements. Um, as many folks may know in our uh, budget this year, we did budget for the library renovation and the projects on Flower Avenue and Ethan Allen streetscape. Uh, would someone like to move the ordinance? So move. Councilmember Smith moves. Councilmember Mail second. Any conversation? Any discussion? No. Can the clerk call the roll, please? Council or call the vote. Sorry. <laughs> Councilmember Tovar. Aye. Councilmember Mail. Aye. Councilmember Qureshi. Aye. Councilmember Siemens. Aye. Councilmember Smith. Yes. Councilmember Schultz. Aye. Mayor Stewart. Yes. All right, our next voting item um, is the second reading ordinance authorizing execution of a contract for services to perform the annual audit of the city financial statements and prepare the comprehensive annual financial report. Councilmember Kovar is going to recruit himself because the firm, if you would like to say it. The firm in question is also the firm that does my, pers my personal family uh, accounting. All right. So would someone like to move this ordinance? I'd like to move it. Council Member Siemens moves. Second. Second. Council Member Qureshi second. Any questions? Discussion? All right. The clerk call the vote. Council Member Mail. Yes. Council Member Qureshi. Yes. Council Member Siemens. Aye. Council Member Smith. Yes. Council Member Schultz. Aye. Mayor Stewart. Yes. Next is our consent agenda. Um, would someone like to move the consent agenda? So moved. Council Member Qureshi with second. Second. Second by Council Member Mail. All those in favor of the consent agenda, please say aye. 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 Oh, is a single? Is that okay? We should call. We should you can call, call it because it's a, there's one single reading ordinance. Okay, yes. call the vote. Yes. Councilmember Kovar. Aye. Councilmember Mail. Aye. Councilmember Qureshi. Aye. Councilmember Siemens. Aye. Councilmember Smith. Yes. Councilmember Schultz. Aye. Mayor Stewart. Yes. All right. <coughs> now we're on to our work session. Um, our work session, the first thing is going to be an update from the executive director of the Tacoma Langley Crossroads Development Authority, uh, Ms. Isis. If you want to actually take a seat, it's a little nicer than standing at the <laughs> microphone. Great. And once again, thank you so much for um, helping us tonight with our Immigrant Heritage Month. Um, just to give people some background, the uh, Tacoma Langley Crossroads Development Authority represents the shared interests of the over 300 businesses, organizations, and property owners located in the vicinity of the intersection of New Hampshire Avenue and University Boulevard, commonly known as the Crossroads. The CDA was organized in 1987 for the purposes of advancing the interests of the diverse businesses within its service area, providing marketing, security, and maintenance support. And we're glad to have you with us this night. Well, thank you very, thank you very much. Um, and thank you for having the council session here on the new aft, mm -hmm. so close to the crossroads. Um, I had thought that I was doing a, a PowerPoint, so the handout that you have had a lot of pictures with the intention of sort of first just showing off the area uh, to, to you um, through photographs, mostly through photographs. So you mentioned we were founded in 1987 and we were, we were authorized by the city. We're a commercial management district um, and our bylaws <clears throat> specify that our purpose is to promote and market commercial management district and to provide security, maintenance, and amenities. And so that was our mission in 1987. Um, and we had a unique structure of license fees based on the amount of square feet that a business leased. And for 27 years, those fees were remained flat. Um, in 2014, our board and then our members approved increases for the first time that gave us the budget that allowed us to do the marketing and promotion, maintenance, and amenities that we've been doing since then. So um, just quickly, <clears throat> we have 175 businesses, 20 properties, and over a million square feet of commercial space. Um, in our marketing and promotion, um, in this past year, we have done newspaper ads. Um, we advertise in three different papers, one of which was in Spanish. Um, we have a very international uh, constituency. Our business owners and our customers are from all over the world. Um, we also um, did direct mailers. 
We have been advertising on ride-on buses. Um, we currently have an ad that's very catchy, that's um, colorful and yellow with a, a map of our area and some of our business owners. We've been advertising in bus shelters for 13 weeks, twice a year. We redid our, our website, so it's now compatible um, with iPhones, since most people are using their phone to find their way. Um, we um, have a seasonal banner program, which our, our businesses sponsor. And then um, to address the issue of the ban on single-use plastic bags, which the council passed and went into effect in December, um, we, we spent a lot of time with our businesses trying to help them transition to non-single-use plastic. And we decided to provide them with a heavy-duty reusable plastic shopping bag that <clears throat> is based on the Aldi shopping bag um, that's designed to be used 125 times. It says so on the bottom. It's two <laughs> milliliters thick. And um, we're having it uh, imprinted with our logo and all of our retail businesses. So these bags have been ordered, and they're going to be distributed en masse to our retailers. Um, some of the other things that we've done, um, <clears throat> we had a marketing consultant who worked with our members free of charge. Um, we've greatly expanded our social media promotions um, thanks to a partnership with um, Laura Barclay, who is my counterpart at Old Tacoma, who's a social media whiz and uh, has made a huge impact on our, um, our brand. We've also done some uh, amenities. These are things that we've been growing over the last five years. Um, we had our Diwali Festival for the second year uh, over at Langley Park Plaza. That's a bi-county event with Council Member Tavares from Prince George's. Um, we, we did um, a night market in May with uh, the Crossroads Community Food Network. Um, and this is, was a collaboration with um, that farmer's market in our area that's 11 years old. And also, um, Laura Barclay, uh, they, we came up with the idea of a night market that would bring people to the area, um, music, entertainment, kids' activities. And it was very successful. Um, and we also are doing, you heard, the Lunch with the Mayor series, which I think um, Laura Barclay came up with the idea of, of uh, bringing um, the mayor to some of our restaurants to try to make our area more visible. And I think it's, it's a great idea. We had a special graphic made. Um, we did another mural that um, just got completed over on Holton Lane. A very colorful mural. Um, took about two months. Big community participation. Um, we also do um, street planters. We've got 40, 43 of them now out on the street. Um, we just put out 10 more uh, in the last week um, in a partnership with the Public Works, which helps us locate them. We have our farmer's market, which I mentioned, um, which is a great amenity. Um, and uh, we also do some maintenance. We do adopt a highway cleanups. We just had one on June 3rd. Um, we're eligible for SSLs, so that helps us get some volunteers. Um, and we do maintenance of our planters. Um, and for FY18, as I mentioned, we're really going to increase our social media enormously. Um, we're reducing some of our print advertising. We're really going to try to develop our brand more um, with high quality, consistent graphics and design across all the media that we advertise in. And we're going to make a, a shift from advertising specific businesses um, as we have been doing, to advertising generically. So our mission is very general about what we're supposed to be promoting. Um, and we're not, it doesn't specify businesses, so we're going to shift to themes, and we're going to be focusing on eating for the next three months. Um, and we're going to have, uh, we had professional photographs taken. We're going to be using those in our ads. Um, we're going to be doing more events. We became an underwriter of the Tacoma radio station, Wowdy. Um, and uh, we're going to do another mural. Um, and we're going to do more collaboration with the OTBA. So um, 
In closing, I just want to thank you for your continuing support of the, the Crossroads Development Authority and economic development in the Crossroads. Thank you so much for coming tonight and for all you're doing. Um, any council questions? Council Member Smith? I, I want to thank you for the presentation and all the hard work uh, that you've given the CDA. Uh, it seems like you guys have really grown. Just a couple questions. One, uh, have you seen an increase in business since the new transit center uh, has gone live? I know that's in Prince George's County, but people that are catching the bus there right. uh, use all those businesses. Um, another question is, can you give us an update on the Taco Bell? How's it coming? Sure. When are they going to turn the lights on? Sure. Uh, we can start there. Thank you. Okay. So yeah, the transit center opened a year late in December, um, and I, it hasn't really changed as far as I can tell um, commerce in the crossroads. Um, it, a number of, of bus stops that were near the center were relocated. They were taken out. Um, and so perhaps it has impacted people who stood at the bus stop because it was very close to Red Apple Farmer's Market or whatever. Now they have to cross the street so they don't have as much time. But I haven't really noticed any difference. Um, and um, the Taco Bell, they just took the construction fencing down yesterday. I think, and um, they're really finishing up the site work. It looks like it's done on the inside, um, and it looks like they're gonna start doing the landscaping any, d any day now. Um, so uh, I think it's, it's, it looks like it's gonna open soon. I asked the property management at JBG, and I have not received a re reply, but I've wondered about that. Um, and just <clears throat> one of the reasons that the CDA did that license fee increase in 2015 was we were getting ready for the Purple Line, um, which was supposed to be finished by 2022. Um, so that's, as you all know, is, is on legal hold. Um, and I don't know what the outcome of that will be, but um, in the meanwhile, we've been developing our programs and trying to fulfill our mission. I think it was last year the Washington Post did the story about how the administration's new approach to uh, immigrants are hurting businesses in the crossroads. Are you still seeing that, or has business picked back up? I think business has picked back up. Good. Yeah, and actually, and interestingly, one of the um, one of our board members was here tonight. Um, she's a, an attorney with an immigration practice at Hampshire Place, and she said that the Trump uh, administration had been good for business. So <laughs> <laughs> I guess it depends on your business. But no, I, I, it, did, it did seem very quiet in, in the beginning of uh, the spring, um, but I, I, it has picked back up to normal. That's, yeah. that's great to hear. And finally, I just want to thank you for implementing the plastic bag ban. Uh, I'm really proud of that ordinance, so thank you. <laughs> Well, thank you. I'm glad glad that to be doing something. I was I totally support the concept personally. Great. Great. Any other questions? No, don't yeah. leave yet. <laughs> yes, uh, you can't get away that easy. Uh, I don't really have any questions. I just want to have a, make a couple observations that I think will help help the uh, under uh, all of us better appreciate the uh, Crossroads uh, Development Authority and and. Uh, M M Melanie Isis alluded to that in her comments is that from 1987 to, to 2014, 14, uh, the license fees had remained uh, fixed uh, despite inflation. And what was basically happening <clears throat> is that the organization uh, capacity w was shrinking. Uh, Ms. Isis came on board in full-time in 2012, so this she'd been there about five, five and a half years, and uh, it was the, the, everybody took a hard look, sort of uh, they asked the existential question: Should the Crossroads Development Authority even bother to continue? Uh, so there was a, a lot of uh, uh, thought given to that introspection. Basically, they made the commitment to themselves that, yes, there is a need for uh, the city uh, approved because the city oversees and reauthorizes the, the existence of the Crossroads Development Authority 
every, what, five years now, I think. I think we got reauthorized until maybe 2022 or three. It was, the idea was to get us through the purple line. Yeah, to get <laughs> us through the purple line. Um, uh, authorized the, the, the increase in the licensing fees. But beyond that, the city is pretty much hands off other than the fact that it now gives an, an annual grant to both the CDA and the OTBA, who we'll be hearing from momentarily, a $35,000 grant for overhead and administration under a contract. And what, what the increase in the licensing fees, which are not insubstantial, uh, these businesses imposed it on themselves, uh, has enabled the CDA's budget to grow by orders of magnitude and to be able to do all kinds of things that it couldn't even conceive of doing. For example, one of the visible changes is the is a contract w with a company that clean picks up all the d what's the word d litters the entire area weekly, cleaning up all the trash by hand around the bus stops and the curbs on the sidewalks and everywhere else. Uh, and what this is doing is that it's actually just changing the f look and feel of the CDA so that it, uh, they, that area just feels m more under control, uh, more civilized and more comfortable. Uh, I, I, I would also add, add that, the, that M Melanie is basically a, a one person uh, cook, chef and bottle washer uh, and, and it's, that's it, there's just this, the executive director no other staff, and she relies on city staff a lot and with, to, with, with Laura Barkley for uh, feedback and uh, reassurance. And recently we talked about the idea of getting maybe a, uh, a citizens advisory committee, in other words, not the businesses who are already members, but to pull together a group of residents who are keen on the future of the crossroads. And uh, they had their first meeting, I guess about a week, a week and a half ago, June 3rd. Uh, which I guess was very successful and encouraging to you because uh, she, you know, any organization needs to have feedback. And that's one of the things that we're, we're trying to, we're, sh she and I are trying to figure out ways to strengthen the, the CDA it's board and we're looking at the possibility of training for the board of directors so they better understand their responsibilities because it's critical uh, that we have a very strong guidance uh, from the members of the organization. Thank you. Councilmember Kershaw. Thank you, Ms. Isis. I just wanted to, one, thank you for all your efforts. I frequent the Langley Crossroads area quite a bit. Um, I have a question and a comment. How far south does your, if I can call it, jurisdiction go? It goes down to the IHA on the, on the east side of New Hampshire. So the reason I ask is Ward 3 sort of continues on, like south of there, um, up to the Eastern Avenue um, uh -huh. intersection. And, you know, that has its own challenges and, and uh, I feel like there's a you know that is the gateway from at least the south if you're coming up New Hampshire Avenue or the North Capitol into Tacoma Park um, and I, I don't know if we can expand your uh, your jurisdiction or what but um, I would love to have coffee with you Ramadan's over on Saturday so soon enough okay. to sit down and uh, maybe get your thoughts maybe with Ms. Sparkley as well about how we can pay some more attention to the businesses there and the, that sort of location. Um, the other thing I wanted to say, when I was running for council two years ago, I know that this so-called Taco Bell was quite controversial in our city. Um, I did not take part in any debate on that issue. However, it is a business in our community. I understand it's a franchise owner who employs a lot of young people of color who I met during the campaign. Um, so just like Ms. Barclay and the mayor were involved in a very special, important ribbon cutting in our nicer parts of our town um, with Tacoma Beverage, which was awesome, I understand. 
In the event that you do the same thing with Taco Bell, I assure you I'll be there and I'll have the taco. Okay. Um, so please don't uh, don't uh, be shy about reaching out to us if there's any such okay. kind of a opening. Good, good to know. I, I, I haven't met the franchise owner yet, but um, I will try to make contact with them and find out what their opening schedule is and the ribbon cutting, and you will definitely be invited. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. And I, I just want to say one last thing, which is that Council Member Schultz is an ex officio uh, on our board. Our, our, our organization is very unusual um, being a commercial management district. We have several ex officios, including one from Prince George's, one from Montgomery, the council member, and someone from the city, as well as someone from the state, DHCD. But Council Member Schultz has been extremely supportive since I came uh, to the position and um, I think he has enormous insight into the mentality of small business people, and he also has a planning background, which I do, and he sees things in that light. Um, and he's been just an enormous, enormous um, help to me, uh, and I just really appreciate everything that he's done. He's really made, made it possible for me to continue. Great, terrific, thank you. And thank you for the presentation. I think we can put that up on the city website with the agenda so other people can look at. Oh, I, sorry, a council member Mail had a question. I, n oh, no. Sorry. No. <laughs> I ignored him twice. <laughs> sorry. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Ms. Isis, for sticking around. Um, uh, a couple of questions. I, as far as I'm aware, the state, the AG, has not yet decided whether to appeal the federal judge's ruling on the purple line. Um, so I think that's still a sort of standing question. And I would encourage the association to send a letter to the attorney general and CC the governor. Um, oh, sure. We, we have been very supportive of the we, Purple Line now. We've, I've written letters to, to the governor. I've, I, I was just specifically I to thought the, that uh, I think the, it's the attorney general ultimately that has the, the authority in this I case. I thought Frosch did, uh, yeah, that did, was did appeal it. He said he's going to appeal? That, that uh, didn't yeah. Happen? Okay. Yeah, it, it's... Uh, it's there was just a, a okay, great. Yeah, it, it's been never done. mind. But but uh, we've been <laughs> we've been very actively supporting. Um, I'm I'm a, I'm a sort of semi board member of Purple Line now. But, great, thank um, you. That's it. Yeah. Now we're all right. Now we're going to move on to our Old Town Business Association, the OTBA. OTBA represents the shared interests of the businesses, organization, and property owners located along and in the vicinity of Carroll Avenue from Lee Avenue in Tacoma Park to 4th Street Northwest in D.C. The mission of OTBA, as designated Maryland Main Street, includes the preservation and enhancement of the physical appearance and health of the area, the retention of its diverse businesses, and the recruitment of new businesses that will contribute to the economic vitality of the city. And we are joined this evening uh, by Ms. Laura Barkley, the Executive Director of OTBA. Thank, Thank you. you for inviting me. Uh, I, too, created a PowerPoint. so. Um, the, the format of my comments um, uh, are in, in slides. So um, I <laughs> thought I'd lay out what we did over the past fiscal year and look ahead to uh, the city's next fiscal year. Um, over the past year, we have been working on a lot of grants, um, project-specific grants and operational grants. Um, we received a State of Maryland grant for $15,000 uh, for art seats that are going to be installed at the gazebo. And we're about to announce this to the community. Uh, we're hoping to create a working group with members of the community as well and uh, let the community pick final selections. But we have approval from the Montgomery County Parks and Planning Board that uh, is responsible for the gazebo. Uh, so it'll be a project, uh, a, a public art project that we can look forward to this year. Uh, last year, we also received a $75,000 grant from um, a community legacy grant from the state of Maryland to replenish our revolving loan fund. And uh, this is a loan fund, which I'll, I'll comment on a little bit more detail in a future slide here. Um, but basically, we use to make loans to our small businesses. So uh, $75,000 goes a long way there. We just most recently received a State of Maryland grant uh, through the Maryland Environmental Trust for $5,000 for use um, for gardening. And I can actually answer Mr. Kovar's question to Mr. Damweber about the tree fences because we positioned the grant uh, to um, 
work on the gardening with the promise that we were to receive these tree fences. So we wanted to upgrade the plantings and then know that they were going to be protected. And the city has received these tree fences, and they are. it's been determined they're a lot harder to put together than they had originally <laughs> anticipated. Um, and, but so they will be in being, they were going to be installed down Laurel Avenue in seven of the tree boxes there. Uh, over a, a couple, one every couple weeks, basically, as the city can put them, uh, Public Works can add them to the schedule. But that was the latest from Daryl two days ago. Uh, we also, uh, last uh, year, during this fiscal year, we last fiscal year, we received a DC Housing and Community Development Grant for $37,000 for operational uh, and administrative expenses, um, as well as the $35,000 from the City of Tacoma Park in our business services agreement. We have one uh, grant that we just wrote that's outstanding, and it is for, to the state of Maryland, for $5,000 for a new mural and sign to go on the side of pizza movers. Oh. So as people enter uh, our commercial district, you don't really know. There's a little sign in, the, in Laurel Ave garden bed uh, so we have approval from the property owner, John Ciolo, and uh, so uh, that is um, submitted, and hopefully we shall receive it. We had a lot of activity recruiting and supporting businesses over the past year. Um, it was a big year, as um, uh, Councilmember Qureshi mentioned, Tacoma Beverage Company just opened over the weekend after a long, hard opening process, I think. Um, the county, we've said publicly before, does not make it easy for small businesses to open, nor does WSSC. So those were the major sticking points, but they're open, and it's very exciting. And they've also just announced that they're taking over the space next door to uh, where Polly Sue's currently resides, because Polly Sue's is moving down the street to where SNA Beads uh, formerly was located. So uh, a lot of positive activity and growth, um, and we're very excited that they're in town now. Um, we also had the, uh, celebrated the opening of Trattoria de Lina, which is like a bonus restaurant in town, too. It was former office space, now mm -hmm. turned restaurant. So uh, they've been up and running and doing quite well, and um, I've, the food is delicious. We also had the opening of Urban Hi-Fi, which is um, down at the junction over the past year. Uh, smaller Business Secret Garden by Connie uh, is a small little flower shop that opened up where Artful Framing formerly was located. Um, Mad Fitness will be moving. Uh, they've been doing a lot of work. They purchased uh, the spot formerly owned by Pizza Roma at the junction, and they'll be moving their studio into that location um, in the next couple of months. Uh, and Richardson School of Music, who is an existing business at the junction, has leased the space that was formerly the Green Commuter, and they are expanding their business so that they have two locations to handle the amount of studio space that they need. Over the past fiscal year, we also celebrated the expansion of Scissor and Comb, which is a hair salon on the corner of Westmoreland and Carroll, which doubled its space by taking over the downstairs after only one year in operation here. Um, looking ahead, uh, we are happy to report that Tacoma Montessori School will be opening hopefully by September. We should be able to make a formal announcement next week. Uh, and this is next to uh, Roland's Barbershop at the junction. They, they finally, have a sign in the window. Yes, it's official. So they <laughs> oh, had wow. a little bit of legal trouble and uh, everything is moving forward now. Uh, I'm also happy to report that there's going to be a restaurant at the junction where Mad Fitness is currently lo located. Um, when they move over to the, their new spot. And uh, we're also going to be getting a shared workspace, uh, which mm -hmm. is going to be on the second floor of 7000 Carroll, where Silver and Perlman Law Firm used to be. And a shared workspace would be a space where you can rent a desk, an office, a boardroom. So I think it's a great addition to uh, the business district, putting more people on the street during the day in it's the, like the a weekday. Yeah, or uh, uh, we work is the sort of brand. Yeah, yeah, right, right. So that list of uh, activity is only on the Maryland side. We had a whole list of activity on the D.C. side of our commercial district because we look at it as a whole. Um, as everyone knows, Starbucks came to town and they're doing okay. You know, there's a lot of people that are supporting them, and um, we're we're happy to um, have them there. Uh, Cycled is a new spin studio that came. 
Big Bad Wolf, a longtime favorite in, in our community, expanded, moved across the street to that space. Um, and an insurance company, Gladstone Insurance, moved into their space on the corner of Maple and Carroll. Long time to come a park business, Artful Framing expanded their business and moved across the district line and is now in uh, the space with Starbucks. Uh, and a long uh, vacant space on Willow Street Northwest is partially filled now by Elite Dental, uh, which is a great addition. Uh, and the Tacoma Central building now is finally fully leased from a commercial perspective. SNA Beads, our longtime um, business in the Tacoma Park, Maryland side of the commercial district, is moving to expand. Again, their business, they want to add classes, so they need more space. They're moving over to that building, and a lease has been signed with a yoga company, a, a yoga group called uh, Yoga Heights. So uh, if you take inventory there, we have one available space left. Uh, on the Tacoma Park, Maryland commercial district, uh, side of the commercial district, which is the former uh, space for people who've been here a while that uh, housed glad rags. This is at the junction. Yeah. And they're under a voluntary environmental remediation program, so they can't be leased. So um, as we look at it, we're almost 100% uh, leased, and we're hopeful that they come off of that program shortly. On the district side, we only have the Tacoma Theater that remains vacant. And we have two spaces on Willow Street Northwest in the Jamal Building with the Douglas Development Project uh, um, uh, building. Uh, so those are, those are big spaces. We've done a lot better leasing small spaces. So those, I think, are still going to take a while. But we're, we're um, in a great space with, with so many um, businesses active um, and spaces filled. So over the past year, we've put on a lot of events in the community. Um, uh, just a quick snapshot of everything through the city's past fiscal year, um, starting with last September, our organization stepped in and hosted a mini folk festival in the absence of the uh, official folk festival while they took a break. Um, we held a parking day, uh, which is a part of a national um, a celebration to change parking spaces into parks. So we had a park set up in front of Ace Hardware last September. We hosted our annual sidewalk sale in September as well to help our businesses turn over their summer inventory and get ready for the holidays. And we also uh, participated in the organization of the Silver Spring Tacoma Park Restaurant Week last September, which uh, was the first year that we got them to incorporate Tacoma Park in the name of the event. So we're anticipating uh, more restaurants participating this year, and we're also working on incorporating restaurants from the Tacoma Langley Crossroads and getting a, uh, a significant representation in the program. Uh, Street Festival, um, uh, as usual, is our, our biggest event of the year, which was last October. We also hosted our last Recycle Please Sit on the Art Auction. Um, that program, people have been asking, where are the seats? I think the seats have migrated into the new seats at the gazebo. So we're going to sort of take it up a level versus the um, repurposed versions that we did before. We're going to get some professionally made seats that will remain in place all the time uh, in this next iteration. We worked with the businesses and, and helped promote Small Business Saturday and our fun Pajama Rama event. And as we entered 2017, we incorporated a new event, event this year called the Tacoma Tap Takeover, trying to tap into uh, craft the popularity of craft beers and matched our businesses with craft breweries. And they, um, every night of the week, there was some place to go to during one a, a quiet week in February that the businesses typically experience. We were able to pull some more people in. We also had a very busy art hop this year in April, uh, 70 artists. I think Sunday was the best day. The streets were packed, oh, the sidewalks, not streets. We don't close it down. But it was just a great day to see Tacoma Park. It was um, just really busy and lots of visitors. We hosted the Grand Avenue Market in May, which is a collectibles and vintage market. And we ran pedicabs up and down Carroll Avenue, bringing people between the farmer's market and uh, uh, the junction. And then we just hosted our final event, the Tacoma uh, of the spring season, which was Tacoma Truck Garden. Uh, we had about 900 people there. It was a great day. Um, I think one of the best quotes of the day was from uh, Eric Bond, who came from the Tacoma Voice, who came to take pictures. And he said, the only people I know here are the police. 
who were our security detail. So I think it's a statement that there's a whole lot of new residents in town, which is great to see, and we really have been pulling in from outside of our community, which is our, our biggest goal to help support our, our small businesses. Uh, those are just repeating, so fall gets busy again. The other thing that we do regularly out of the Old Tacoma Business Association is promote uh, our community. We do it through social media. We promote the businesses, promote coming to our commercial district. Um, and also we like to just make people feel good about why they live here and make people feel like this is the place to visit. And that's sort of the whole purpose of our social media and promotional efforts. So uh, on a daily basis, we're doing social media posts. We also do the weekly e-blast that everybody goes to for what to do in town, and we compile that. And then we did a couple special promotions this year, which were the All Are Welcome Here, Hate Has No Business Here, which we did the week before the inauguration and before the Women's March. And it, was, it really resonated with the community. We had so many people wanting the posters for themselves. Um, with all the visitors in town for the march, we had people calling us after asking if they could replicate the poster in their community. So we thought that was really special. We also decided, well, that worked really well, and it was really great to see all of these, this it's common message in each of our businesses. So we took that with Pride Month this month in June and created the Tacoma Pride promotion and posters that are up in all the businesses now. And, and same, similar feedback. People want them, but they... Um, they like them, and again, it just makes them feel good about living here. Um, we're also a membership association, so part of our responsibility is managing our membership. And we've got about 100 street front businesses, 70 uh, of those are members, and we've got about 90 current members in our association. So we have people that are off, or businesses that are off street, so businesses that are in the Tacoma Business Center or above Amano or Roscoe's are our members as well. We derive about 11% of our annual revenue from members, and this membership has been increasing since we've been um, having we get more businesses in our community and really show people our value. And so it's increased 500% uh, over the past five years. I was just doing the math. So um, another pro program that we manage are our loan funds for our small businesses. So we have two loan programs. One's called a revolving loan fund, which started as a grant from the state of Maryland in 2009, uh, and it was a $125,000 grant uh, that we were able to make loans to the small businesses. And we've made 13 loans over the past um, how many years? The eight years, and uh, we have three active loans out now. And this is money that businesses we use to recruit new businesses. We businesses use it for startup um, inventory expansion, uh, whatever they need it for. So it's great that we have it on hand, and that's where that new $75,000 grant is going to enhance this loan fund. So right now we've got $100,000 available to be loaned out to our small businesses. In addition to that program, we've got Tacoma Notes, which is our micro lending program. So it's a community-funded loan that we initiate or we Organized. So um, we have one active loan in this program with Mad Fitness. Um, we'd like to make more loans through this program, but we're finding that businesses tend to move toward the revolving loan fund. It takes two weeks. You can get a loan pretty quickly, whereas the Tacoma notes, we'd have to put a call out to the community. 60 days later, you get your money. So it seems to be just more convenient, but we're really hopeful. It's, um, we think it's pretty... A uh, pretty great program. We put a lot of effort into it, and we'd like to be making more loans through that method. Uh, just a few other quick things that we did over the past fiscal year. Um, we worked a lot on getting D.C. rush hour restrictions removed on Carroll Street Northwest. So it's not in Maryland, but it does impact our businesses and our commercial district. There was uh, no parking restrictions during uh, AM and PM rush hour, and it was impacting the small businesses on the block of Carroll right off next to the metro. Um, after a good solid year we, of working on them, we finally got it removed, um, and Supergirl uh, was one business that was impacted, and she has said that she has got a 30% increase in her evening sales since those um, restrictions were removed. Uh, I added this because it was fun, the new water fountain for the event that's been showing up around town. We sourced this and we contributed to the payment of the, the, um, 
the water fountain, and you'll see this around town for, for new events um, or for events over the past year. Uh, we're also working gazebo repairs. I don't know if you've looked uh, looked up under the gazebo. The whole ceiling's falling apart. The, the, the gazebo's not painted. The benches are falling apart. The perimeter um, of the brick wall is, is falling down. So I think finally um, we've got the attention of the right people, and I think we're going to get on the schedule. We had one last meeting last Friday, um, but we're due for a big round of repairs there. So hopefully um, we'll see that shortly. Uh, we worked on walking maps over the past year, so hopefully you've seen maps sitting on the counter t the counters at the businesses, so when people come into town, they might find another activity to do. Um, that's a project we worked on, and uh, we're also working now with a consultant on finalizing a market analysis. So looking at our commercial business mix, where are we now, what differences could we make? We don't, we use this originally um, uh, to recruit businesses, well, we don't have any available commercial space. So, well, Tacoma Junction can use, or the um, developers at NDC can use this to help pick tenants uh, at the junction, Tacoma Theater as well. But it also will give information to our existing businesses on how they could perhaps modify their existing product mix. So, where, what are we lacking in, um, in, in retail in our community and what could do well? So, we'll hopefully be seeing that shortly. Uh, the last thing I just wanted to highlight is we've turned into a little store. We have so much to come of merchandise now coming out of our um, office that I'm feeling like the gap these days. So all of the Tacoma t-shirt people are wearing, wearing them all proudly. We've got t-shirts and hats and mugs and, and can't keep up with it. So we sell it through Ace Hardware, we sell it through uh, Art Spring, and we sell it direct at festivals. But I think it's been a lot of fun and, and people really enjoy it. So I thought I'd end on a fun note. So thank you for your support. Mm -hmm. Thank you, and thank you for all your hard work this year. Um, and thank you for the collaboration between the CDA and OTBA. I think it's really a testament to both of you as individuals um, and really seeing the great you know, successes coming out of that. I'm looking forward to this upcoming year. Um, do my colleagues have any questions? Council Member Kovar? Thank you, and thank you, uh, Ms. Barkley, for coming forward. I think all the new businesses that you mentioned, it's very impressive. I've been to a lot of them. I've been to some on the district side, too, which are good also. Um, just a couple of questions. Um, you mentioned, I think, that working with the county for the permitting can be very difficult. And when I talked to a few of the merchants, they said, well, why isn't there something that is different for small businesses? Is that something that you would potentially support? Uh, and I'm not suggesting that you would have had an opportunity to research it necessarily yet, but does that, have you seen that as an ongoing problem? Uh, for sure. I and mean, we're a 501c3, so we couldn't lobby for it, but we can educate people on it. And education, for example, would be the fact that uh, Tacoma Beverage Company, for those who've been in there, is required to have two uh, restrooms, which takes up almost a third of the back end of the building. Uh, and that's a requirement that is the same for a, a thousand square foot space or, you know, a 5,000 square foot space. There's got to be some modification for the little guys. They just don't, they don't carve them out any differently than looking at a big business. So we've had some really basic discussions with um, uh, county council on this, but um, haven't haven't taken anywhere, just but, but gathering information and just the feedback that we've been getting from the businesses. Okay. Um, I noticed on your list of events you didn't have the uh, Old Town cleanup, which I've helped out in sometimes. And the worst thing about that is all the cigarettes that are outside all these buildings. Has there been any thought about whether we should be allowing, you know, smoking on the, on the street and so on? Is that something that people have talked about at all? Uh, no, well, I was just asked to do a, a little research on it, so I um, very recently, so I have not <laughs> embarked on that, but I do need to. Um, uh, Mayor Stewart asked me to talk to the businesses to get a feel for, yeah. uh, or well, mostly it's around the restaurants, obviously, mm -hmm. and um, they should be out cleaning the sidewalks the next morning themselves, but. Uh, there's obviously people walking away with cigarettes in hand, too. Mm -hmm. um, so, yes, I'm, I'm looking at pulling the businesses, seeing how much, how, how they've limited it, for example, people with outdoor seating, um, which I don't think they allow, but we'll just confirm that. Um, and then 
just talk to them, uh, the other businesses in general, and just get general feeling on do we need, you know, if you okay. took it away, how, do you, how, how would okay. that be? Um, and I know the people who want to hear about this recreation center project have been very patient. But I just want to make two more points. One, we are still, we have pledged to try to address the inventory tax, so that's something for the future. And the one other thing, and this is more for the city, all of the additional businesses I think are great. It does come with a little bit more in the way of um, noise, uh, garbage concerns, et cetera, and it's one of the things we did talk about a little bit in the context of the council priorities. So I just want to urge the um, city staff to look closely at the compliance issues so that the nearby neighbors can just enjoy the businesses and not have to deal with any of the negative aspects of them. So thank you. Okay. Councilmember Mail. Thank you, Mayor. Um, a few comments, uh, just uh, on the light side. Your description of all the businesses that are changing places with other businesses and moving down the street. With just a little more drama, it would make a great reality TV show. <laughs> so maybe you could get a you know a pilot uh, pitched to Hollywood, which would really help business development. Yeah, exactly, mm -hmm. Discovery Channel. Um, uh, the second is... Um, I think there's been a whole bunch of fantastic branding that has come out of uh, your work and the artists in the community and the businesses. Um, and I really like the Pride Week uh, poster. is just a great example, very, very iconic, um, would have an enduring value for a long time. Um, and Roscoe's on there. And uh, I, I think of our, we've had our um, Sit On Me competition, the art competition. I think it'd be really cool to do a, a, a Roscoe-themed art competition. You don't have to be able to sit on it. Uh, the rooster. Um, but even, you know, branding, uh, Miss Isis talked about the bags, the reusable bags. So, you know, sort of a, an effort that might over a few years start exploring, you know, Roscoe-themed art that might eventually settle on something that's very, very iconic that could be used, you know, citywide, mm -hmm. government, non-government business, um, because there's just so many wonderful things that have, that have come out uh, from, from the, the sort of annual branding Efforts. So I just wanted to put that suggestion out there. Uh, last two things. Um, it would really be great to understand what barriers exist for businesses to put solar panels on their roofs. Um, so often it's old, uh, old roof infrastructure, or um, because they're small businesses, they have a lot of uh, heating, cooling, venting uh, structures that make it difficult to have space. But to the extent that there is room for solar, that's something that just has a lot of you know community value in terms of making it part of an attractive uh, destination. And then having just come back from California, um, there's a movement afoot to create basically low carbon menus and low carbon menu options, much like you can go to a restaurant and get a seafood selector that says this, this tuna came from the right place and that tuna came from the wrong place, uh, going into a menu and knowing that that's a, a low carbon salad and that's a high carbon salad. And the business is one that is, uh, Council Member Smith and I were talking about, is you know a Paris um, compliance, Paris Agreement compliant business versus one that could do a little bit more. That's great. Yeah. So um, I expect that will be spreading, and uh, our businesses would be a great place to again create some you know brand distinction in the hyper competitive DC uh, environment to do to ch start looking into that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Great. Actually, I had a question because uh, Councilmember Mail reminded me um, that Republic was looking into composting um, they and set doing it up. that. I, I, they've moved forward with that yes. and it's working it's out? it's out back, yep. Okay, mm -hmm. cool, thank you. Um, I think I had Councilmember Smith and then Councilmember Siemens. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Barkley, you um, uh, impressed me more and more each year. Thank you. Uh, thank you for, you know, this presentation. I, I love the fact that you guys are now doing merchandise. That's really cool. A uh, couple questions. Is, is there any way that we can get the District of Columbia to give us more money? Have you have you thought about that? Well, they have given us more money than City of Tacoma Park <laughs> in fiscal but, year but yes, seventeen. Yes, but their their budget is thirteen billion. Um, I have not been asked to apply for the fiscal year eighteen, and their fiscal year eighteen started on October first. Right. The grant money that we get through housing and community development. It's so disorganized and so unclear as to who gets it. And I did this. This happened to us last year. It feels a little later even this year where we finally got the grant in July and we had to spend it by the end of September. And it was a full year grant. So it takes some creative uh, accounting to get that all applied. Um, 
So, no, I'm just so grateful every day that I get to meet with you all, and it's so um, easy to access um, all of you because it's so incredibly hard on the D.C. side. Um, so I don't have a better answer than that. If, if there's anything we could do to help, please let us know. Appreciate it. I, I guess we can call you a marketing genius now. Oh, I mean, please. What, what, what you've done for Old Town and even the Junction yeah, is really impressive. How can we, you know where I'm going with this, get that same extra expertise in Ward 5? Because we do have these small retail districts. They are not within your legal jurisdiction of the um, business association but they can learn a lot from what you're doing. Is there any way that, you know, you have meetings with the members that, you know, the business is located in Old Town, that you can invite some of these, like, orphaned businesses that are not part of any other associations and give them best tips or practices or help them set up their social media? Uh, because, I mean, what you're doing now is just, it's driving business. It's bringing people to Tacoma Park, and it's really helping uh, these businesses that exist here. And it's also bringing in new hip businesses that maybe would not have considered Tacoma Park a few years ago. Uh, and now they are because of your efforts, your marketing efforts. But can you consider that? I absolutely can consider that. <laughs> I mean, I'd be happy to meet with some of your businesses and, you know, talk about social media. You know, that's easy and free, and right. I would be happy to have that conversation with them and set up a meeting to do that. In, in the mural that you're doing for Pizza Movers, how did all of that come about? Because I'd love to see, you know, a mural or something on one of the businesses at uh, Piney Branch and Flower, mm -hmm. uh, thinking about the uh, laundry uh, mat that's, that's on the corner there. That mm -hmm. could be a great potential because there's there isn't a sign or any place making that says you're in Tacoma Park. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, how did you initiate that conversation? Is there some type of um, agreement uh, that you have with the uh, landlord? Um, can you talk about it in the easement or? Sure. I mean, it's so we're in a historic district, so I had to pick a building that was already painted because right. you cannot paint uh, on painted brick. Um, <laughs> and that was an obvious place. And John Arciolo is so supportive of everything we do. So that was easy. Um, and then just getting into the grant cycle, every May, June, the state of Maryland opens up grants that are would be great. Well, I'm hoping we'll see if I get this grant, we'll know that's what they're looking for. But um, they've got several different categories of grants and um, just, you know, slot it. Think, think about finding a location now and slotting it for the next grant cycle for the state of Maryland next um, spring. Um, but Is that something that you could... Uh Organize, or should I go through housing and community development for that? Or yeah, I mean, I could I could point them and it'd be writing a grant. So um, I mean, I'm happy to share what we've done and show them where that information is um, and help someone get started. But yeah, it would be a little effort to write a grant. Art Hop this year. Was there an opening reception like you've done in the past, or you just? There wasn't. It out. No, it, it was a whole lot of effort and not a lot of return. So we decided to refocus our energy on the two days okay. instead of that Friday. Mm -hmm. I, I always enjoyed the reception. Oh, thanks. <laughs> All right, so thank you very much. I don't have any more questions. Councilmember Siemens. Thank you, Mayor. And as you might, uh, it might not surprise you, uh, my question is parallels Councilmember Smith yes. uh, for Ward 4. You know, you, you and Ms. Isis have both done fantastic uh, work with the uh, businesses in your individual districts, but we have uh, a couple pockets of neighborhood businesses and Ward uh, 5 and Ward 4, uh, I think, are the uh, primary ones. Um, and I think it would be um, interesting to think about uh, maybe what, what this council should do to try to 
um, organize some support for those businesses. I know that Ward 3 has them also that uh, mm -hmm. uh, we should be considering when we do this because you know, both of you are doing excellent work in these uh, in your individual business areas. Those are the primary business areas for Tacoma Park. But we shouldn't leave the uh, uh, the stepchildren, or, you know, mm -hmm. to themselves. We should be supporting them and helping them. It's outside of your charter, uh, but I would appreciate you working with the uh, uh, economic development, housing economic development department, to come up with an idea of how we could, uh, you know, support those businesses also. Agree. I, I think this is part of the economic development discussion that Council Member Schultz has, has proposed. Um, I think we could look at Tacoma Park as a whole yeah. um, as we implement these, um, because what we're doing is can be just uh, through all, all of the commercial mm -hmm. districts in the community. So I think it's part of a bigger discussion for sure. Mm -hmm. Council Member Schultz. Uh, yeah, I just was going to say something building on what uh, uh, Council Member Kovar's question to you about things that are stymieing small businesses b because of the obsolescence of building requirements in the county and Councilmember Qureshi's questions to uh, Ms. Isis about the possibilities of expanding the uh, uh, CDA's effectiveness further down New Hampshire Avenue. I mean, those are both obvious things that we would want, but getting there from here um, is is a uh, it, it's hard it's hard to figure that out. Um, I, I and and the the feeling is is that that we here on the council often hear about issues like like the inventory tax that certain businesses but not others are practically traumatized by. Uh, and then we hear the story about Tacoma Beverage and, and the agonies. I mean, that took them, seemed like they were never a year. Going, a year. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's cruel and unusual punishment. I mean, that's almost tantamount to saying this county does, really doesn't want you to open up. You know, go, go somewhere else and find something else to do. I mean, that, and I don't think that's an exaggeration. At least that's the way the, the owners are going to feel. Uh, Somehow or another, it's just, and, and these orphan areas of the city also, e even though if it's just a, a, a two or three or four stores together, for that immediate community or for those little businesses there, uh, I mean, that, those are important, as important as any other business, but they don't get the, you know, the, the traffic or the exposure or the... Uh, technical or the marketing assistance like the ones in uh, the crossroads are getting and yet they they should have a piece of that pie as well uh, and that's one of the reasons I was thinking and sort of proposing the idea of an economic development commission to sort of figure out I mean because I don't have the answers to these questions but I, I, a lot of some of the answers are going to come from the businesses themselves and if you can get them, and if we can get, it doesn't take many because most, we you'll, we always find that most business people are are too busy running their businesses to give much time to the greater good. But if some can, and some of them can be extraordinarily effective, as you know, um, to get their voices into this conversational mix, so that we up here, as a city council, can really be more effective. So Agreed. what you're doing is setting an example of what can be done, and the same thing goes over it with the transformations that have occurred in the Crossroads area over the last five years, Th thanks to Ms. Isis. Okay. Thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you very much. And on that note, thank you for coming this evening. Thank you, Ms. Isis, and uh, we'll hopefully be talking more. Um, now we're going to move on to the presentation of development partner proposals for the New Hampshire Avenue Recreation Center. I think I'm turning it over to Ms. Daines, yes? And Mr. Clark, is he joining? <laughs> Good
Good evening. As the mayor's indicated this evening, uh, we wanted to give you an overview of the, an update on the status of our solicitation for letters of interest for a development partner for the redevelopment of this particular property. Um, we posted online the responses that we received from each of the um, firms that submitted uh, some interest in the project. And as you'll note, it's a different process than what we did when we went through with the Tacoma Junction. There we were looking for specific concept plans. We wanted to know what their financing package was, if they had the financial and the technical capacity to actually build a building, and what it would look like, how it would be financed, et cetera. With this particular approach, we're looking more for a partner to work with us throughout that whole process. So when you look at the submissions, you'll notice that it focuses on the um, expertise of their development team. It gives examples of past projects that they've done, and it lays out um, information on how they've engaged the community in that development or that planning process. You won't see any specific concept plans. You won't see any numbers or financing in terms of what it is that we'll get at the back end, but more of why um, they would be the best fit for us as we go through this planning process. So I've received a number of questions from the community, and there seems to be a little bit of confusion. So it's a little different than what we've done in the past. We're hoping that this process will work because it's such a big asset to the community, and there are a lot of people that are very interested about retaining the recreational services that this site f provides. But there's an equal amount of access to addressing some of the affordability aspects of housing in the community as a whole and advancing the economic development efforts that are taking place throughout the corridor. So with that being said, our primary focus when we issued this uh, solicitation was to define a development partner to work with us to expand and enhance the recreational fa um, facilities for the community as a whole, but specifically this area, and to take a few steps forward to the goals that have been identified through the uh, Tacoma Langley Crossroads Sector Plan. Uh, we received responses from five firms um, uh, they're interested in partnering with us on this. Um, four of them were found to be responsive, and frankly, they were all very qualified, had a lot of development experience, and had a lot of work in terms of working with um, mixed-use projects, um, including housing, some retail, and a lot of in-house um, amenities that were targeted for their, for their residents. Uh, the fifth response, um, we've determined to be non-responsive to the solicitation in that they proposed uh, reworking the entire process that we had um, laid out and indicating their um, hesitancy in terms of working with us that uh, it, wasn't, it was just not going to work. Um, so we went through and evaluated the four proposals that we felt were the most responsive. Um, there was an internal staff review committee made up of uh, members of the Housing and Community Development Department and the Rec Department. And we went through, evaluated them, um, followed up with each of the four responsive proposals, and asked them a couple of questions, um, specifically to clarify their community engagement process that they anticipated going through for this project, and to um, get some clarification in terms of if they had looked at alternative sites for the, the rec center. Um, as you'll go th note when you go through the solicitation, it identifies that basically anything's on the table. It could be a standalone recreation facility on this site, mixed use development on this site, or something here in a rec center within a reasonable distance of this location. Nothing has been determined at this point. One of the proposals of the, or one of the letters of interest that we received from the Coalition for Homeless and the Orlo Fund was that they um, seemed to highlight identifying um, alternative sites within a reasonable distance of this location. So we asked everybody if they had given that any consideration because it had not been specifically called out in their letters. Um, everyone is open to everything, um, which is good because that's part of the whole process of going through this community engagement um, effort and to get feedback from the community residents and evaluate what all of our options might be. So, which is a very long and involved way of saying that we went through and looked at each of the proposals. We rated them on their ability to work uh, collaboratively with the part, uh, with the city, and that was frankly the highest rated criteria. We considered their qualifications and experience of the firm and the development team, all of which were quite um, 
well regarded. The innovativeness and quality of past projects, um, prior public-private partnership experience, and their um, track record as far as how um, they got the community involved in the uh, planning process. Two of the four proposals uh, came to the top, if you will. The first being Montgomery Housing Partnership. Um, they uh, received, um, they were highly rated because of the quality and innovativeness of past projects, their extensive work and experience in Montgomery County, um, their prior community engagement efforts, and Greg was in particularly impressed with their inclusion of the firm of Grimm and Parker Architects in the project because of their um, the recreational and other community facilities that they've done throughout the region. Um, so they rated the highest of the four that we received. Uh, close, uh, as far as the, the ranking system, was the community part, excuse me, Community Preservation Development Company, or CPDC, um, who is partnering with Winesick and Associates, which is a firm that we retained when we were going through and evaluating what the land use options were for this site, be it a, a mixed use property or just a standalone recreational facility. And they also have um, experience working on recreational facilities. Um, we also rated uh, CPDC highly for their incorporation of community and resident based. Um, amenities in their projects, one of which we um, noted in the uh, cover memo was the Wiley B. Bates Heritage Park project in Annapolis, which includes not only uh, an affordable housing component, but also um, a boys and girls club and a senior center. So of the four, we're recommending or suggesting to the council that you consider uh, looking at the top two rated proposals and let us know how you'd like to proceed from this point. Uh, we have tentatively scheduled on July 12th presentations from, from one or more of the respondents, at which point you would have an opportunity to meet with them directly. Um, and then at that point, have a discussion about what you think and possibly um, adopt a resolution uh, selecting one of the development teams on July 26th. Again, this is identifying a partner that you want to work with through this collaborative process. It would be um, heavy citizen involvement, uh, particularly with the Friends of the Tacoma Park Recreation Center, the Rec Committee, the various neighborhood associations and tenant associations in the um, uh, ward, as well as the Condo Association, which is right behind this building. Councilmember Schultz? Yeah. <laughs> I, I read all five of them, I, I'd like to say thoroughly, but I can't say that because some of the proposal, one or two of them were extraordinarily long because of all their attachments. But basically I read all of them. There was a 10 page limit, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> some uh, of them. And I found it very difficult, <clears throat> except for the one that you mentioned. Uh, to choose among them because they uh, all had different strengths. And so I was glad not to be part of the selection committee <laughs> like I was on a previous contract. And I thought, Lord, help those who have to make this decision because typically um, you, you're looking for, in these kinds of RFPs, which is, this is not like, uh, you're looking for like a bottom line. Well, how much is this? What's your, what's your price? Well, there's no dollars in this thing at all. Uh, so we're dealing with a great deal of subjectivity. Um, I think one of the things that I'm going to be interested in learning more about when we have a chance to talk to these people is their literal capacity to take take on a a complicated project. When I say literal, I mean the the financial capacity for them, and that doesn't necessarily mean how wealthy the entity is, but it means more how capable they are of figuring out how to get the financing to do a complex project like, like we're talking about here. Um, to me, because it's one thing for them to have the experience and have a lot of enthusiasm, but any partner that we bring to be a partner with us 
they're going to have to carry the lion's share of the, of the financing. We, you know, we're bond, pretty well bonded out in terms of the money that we can, we as a city can come up with to, to sort of, uh, sort of say that oh, you know we're not going to be a 50-50 partner you know, on, on, on a 20 million dollar project that this might cost. Let's say uh, the other one of the other things is is that is their 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 creativity sort of a barometer of their creativity, their ability to think creativity, to, to think creatively, as well as their ability, their, their, to, to move forward on something uh, relatively quickly. Um, because while we know, I, we know that this project isn't going to get built that you know, isn't going to be resolved and defined and, and uh, then contracted out by yet another entity uh, necessarily. It's, it's going to take time, but I, I, I don't want anybody to think that this is an academic exercise. Rather, this is something we, we actually want to get done as soon as possible, and I hope it doesn't become another purple line kind of a thing where it's always just over the horizon. So those are some th things that I'm interested in, in um, ferreting out when we have a chance to. Uh, and I guess the question I have for you, to what extent are we going to be able to see staffs um, in writing or, or however you might have a matrix of your rankings and, what, what, and how you, what, so, so that you could share that information if you can share it with us, so that we can benefit that uh, as as we as we think about having these interviews. Any other councilmember Mills? Yeah, thank you for the, um, the presentation and the summary. Um, uh, you know, I, I'm conscious of the um, the occasions of my time on council where the beginning of a process I. I was expecting one thing, and by the end of the process, we got something else. So I just wanted to, uh, consistent with Councilmember Schultz's comments, my understanding of the nature of the partnership is that what we contribute is the land on behalf of the county uh, and the intent to pay for the operating costs, maintenance, build out of the rec space, but that our, otherwise our financial commitment is zero or close to zero. Um, and that what the developer gets is a space in which they can provide enough construction of whatever mixed uses that would be to have it pencil out for them to make the rest of the investment. Right. So is that clear? Is the, is the four of, from the four potential partners, is that clear from them? Or is, are there differences that you can read into the information they provided where some of them look like they might be expecting us to attribute two, five, ten, twenty million dollars, and others have an expectation more like I just described. When we um, issued the solicitation, we made every effort to keep everything on the table, so that um, this issue came up during the informational meeting. In fact, and basically, uh, what all of the groups were told was there are no preconceived notions in terms of who is, is or is not going to be paying anything for this project. Because, because there is a, could potentially be a very large public element to this um, development, the recreational facility, for example. So Greg wants 20,000 square feet. If you can put 40,000 square feet of development on this site, I'm just pulling numbers out of the air, there would be some expectation that the city would have to participate financially because it is a public asset. How that financial um, obligation is structured is still up in the air. So it could be it could be a complete turnkey project where they design it, we approve the design and then pay them for it and unlock the door. Or it could be uh, a lease type of arrangement where they go through, build everything, and then we lease the space. It could be an arrangement where we pay them to operate a recreational center in this facility. So there are all sorts of possibilities as far as how it could be structured. So and so we've been trying really hard to keep it pretty much wide open in terms of what 
could end up at the back end as we go through this um, planning process to come up with a specific. Okay. And I'll just facility. indicate that for me at the beginning of the process, the expectation that came out of our discussion was the nature of a public private partnership, like for example, the toll roads in Virginia, where a private company builds and then operates the toll, the toll lanes, was that the costs were going to be with our partner largely. So I just, I just comment on that because that's where I was when I was voting mm -hmm. in this process. Um, to your point about you know, sort of what comes next, um, based on what we asked for in information, what you've described we've received, uh, and sort of the general nature of the process, I think it would be really premature to pick somebody at this point. Um, I, I guess my sense of the, of the package that we put out was also that that was not a package which indicated that if you made it through that stage, you were going to be the partner moving forward. So I feel like we used it as a request for information, a request for interest, and that that's, that that's what we got, which is good. Um, that we should probably spend more time together, including hearing from the four uh, parties that submitted uh, uh, interest, um, only assuming we'll throw the fifth one out, as you said, uh, to spend more time talking to them, talking to them about things like costing things like their vision of you know what how much how much developable space do you see on this site mm -hmm. and really having that discussion with the council with city staff and with the potential partners to try to get a clear expectation of what we want um, on big projects when we don't know what we want at the beginning or any body government non-government doesn't know what they want at the beginning or what they're going to get I just think there's a lot of room for to not to not get what anyone expects at the end of it Anyone else? Councilmember Siemens? Thank you, Mayor. Um, I tend to be in the same uh, vein of thought as Councilmember Mayle, and um, because I can see where, uh, you know, some of these may have uh, some of the proposals or proposers. Uh, may have limitations on what they could do in different financing approaches and if that hasn't even been talked about at this point it seems premature to be you know trying to pick one to go you know start dancing with before uh, we learn more about each of the proposals if, if I might respond though um, the process that we laid out in the solicitation that was um, presented to the council several months ago um, is in multiple phases. Um, the, the second phase, if you will, is to start that process, to start that discussion. What as a community is needed as far as recreational facilities? Is there an interest in having a full-fledged gym and an, what, an interior water space or something like that? Um, what the expectations are and what the demand is and the interest. And to take that information and gradually come up with a concept plan that is acceptable to the council and the community as a whole and then go to the next phase in terms of what's feasible from a development standpoint as far as the site and the costs associated with it and how that might translate out into um, a partnership, a final, final partnership agreement with the city. Uh, that's part of the reason why we didn't ask for any financial information or proposals in terms of how much you're going to buy this land for it to, from us um, because we felt that it was important to go through that process because there's so many people that are interested in this particular facility and take or use it, the services that are provided by it. Um, so at this point in time, none of the proposals have included any financial information and um, based on the way it's, the responses are structured, you're going to get a lot of information saying, um, tell us what you want. We'll s we need to see if it's conceptually f or if it's financially feasible and what other, the other issues are. And then they can come back with a, a, a proposal, which would be very similar to what the more traditional approach we took with the um, mm -hmm. Tacoma Junction site. The other option you've got, I mean, we can go back and start um, start this process over again if you'd like. We could also take the Branstetter Carroll proposal, hire a consultant to work through all of this with us to come up with a, a plan and then put that out there and see who wants to um, partner with us on the development. Right. 
I guess, uh, you know, everything you said as far as what needs to be done, I, I agree with. I have no, no concerns about that. I'm just, uh, I, I'm st struggling with the concept of uh, trying to identify one organization to work with at this point in the process. That's so one of the one of the options you have, if you decide to proceed to the next <coughs> level, is to meet with them all and, and interview them and mull it over. Um, I mean, you, you laid out a list yeah. of things that we need to know, and certainly the developers are going to need to know uh, before they can start uh, coming up with even a concept. Uh, right, which will include a whole lot of right. public meetings with people that are. Um, important stakeholders in this project. Okay. And I think, I, as uh, Ms. Daines mentioned, that we have on time on the agenda on July 12th to have, you're, you're proposing two of the um, folks come and meet with us. Um, and at that point, council, or we could decide we want more of them to come, all four of them to come. Um, but it's at that point that we could meet with two, if we take the recommendation of the um, the top two, meet with them, and then have a conversation of, you know, does one stand out for us? Do we, after having this conversation with the folks who propose, does they, do they answer these questions, and does it make sense for us to go to the next step? Um, or do we like, ah, eh, I'm not so sure about it. We're not feeling it. Do we take a step back? So I think the way that we've put forward for the process is getting this overview tonight. Um, looking, having folks, if you haven't had a chance to look at what has been posted, um, because I think if you look at that, it, it's a little easier to um, follow along what Ms. Daines uh, and Mr. Clark are proposing tonight, um, and then meet with some of the, um, the folks who have put in proposals mm -hmm. on July 12th, and then from there we can make our decision of how we want to move forward. Okay. I think it's, you know, it's good that we got quality responses. Uh, they're all they're all really quite impressive. Yeah, I just uh, think it's hard to, to uh, get down to the level of detail before we know what it is that we want. Right. The other the other thing to keep in mind with the process that's laid out in the solicitation is that you don't actually enter into a development agreement mm -hmm. with the group until the very end. So there are points throughout that process that, you know, this is just not going to work for that particular team. You can still use that information and go with somebody else or scrap the project as a whole or you have lots of options. Determine what type of arrangement uh, they want with the developer, whether it's something, you know, that Council Member Mayo was describing or one of the many options that Ms. Daines was describing. Right. And I guess, Ms. Daines, correct me if I'm wrong, the way I've looked at it since you first brought the um, um, RFP to us that we looked over and commented on is that, you know, this is just the next step. We wanted to see, one, was there interest, what kind of proposals we got. If we got some very interesting proposals, narrowing that down and saying, like, oh, let's see if we start talking to one of these groups in more detail where it leads. But we are making no commitment at this time. And as Councilmember Mail said and Councilmember Siemens, we have to figure out a lot of things. And it could be two, three months down the road. And we have wonderful <coughs> residents here who have been very involved with that. And they'll give us some feedback that we say, like, you know what, these, these folks aren't working out. Maybe we go back to somebody else who had proposed and we try out two three months working with them and see how that worked is that am i thinking of it correctly or I was not trying, so much i was trying to explain this to my husband and i compared it to match.com okay <laughs> you know what i mean you're not getting married you're no, just trying to see if you really want to go out on that second date kind of thing <laughs> so it's, it's swipe, does that swipe, does that make sense to anybody <laughs> He laughed at me too. And, and I just wanted to indicate to, the, to your specific question, I'd like to meet with all four um, bachelor bachelorettes yes. okay. at our next meeting. <laughs> yeah. All right, uh, Councilmember Cover and then Councilmember Smith. Jared, do you want to go first? No, go ahead. Uh, thank you for the, for the presentation. The um, I was curious, and I think I get what you're saying, that this is not meant to be, you know, the true sort of vision for what they would do as much as what kind of what their approach would be. But it seemed as if two of them 
and only one of those was the, one of the ones you recommended that rose to the top of the two. But two did show these sort of, uh, by no means you know, blueprints, but schematic drawings of what the building might look like. And one of those you picked and one of them you didn't for your, you know, who's rising to the top kind of group of two. And then one of the ones you picked for that group of two didn't have that. So I thought to me, just in looking at that, it was nice to sort of see, oh, here's kind of how they would, you know, just early, how they would configure the plot of land, so to speak, if they were going to do this. And I think they both were talking about housing and uh, rec and not uh, retail and, and offices. So can you talk a little bit about, not, not that those schematics should be the sole factor, but it seemed like those were the two where I had the clearest idea of what they thought initially they might do with it, what made one, in your mind, good and one not, and what may, made the other one join the group of two, if that's not too convoluted a question. It's not. Um, I believe you're talking about the um, Coalition for Homes and the Orlo Fund which showed a footprint, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and the other one was CPDC, right. um, which showed a schematic that was developed under the um, plan or the land use feasibility study we did with Winesec. So mm -hmm. that image, if I remember correctly, was pulled from uh, the background information that we provided to all of the firms. Okay. So that particular image, um, and I sure hope I'm doing it right. Yeah. That particular image is an example of what is possible on the site and that was shared with all of the um, okay. uh, people that were interested in following through on this. Um, I can't speak for the Coalition for the Homeless or the Orlo Fund, but from my perspective, uh, this is being laid out to show how it might work based on the current ownership arrangements with um, given that the Orlo Fund owns the property, the real, or the real estate right next door. Um, they are also the group that uh, focused a lot of their information on alternative uh, oh sites for a rec center. Mm -hmm. So whether or not the rec center could be um, uh, incorporated within that footprint that they're showing here or not, um, I don't know. And we honestly didn't follow up on that because that was not part of what we were evaluating. Okay. So, um, in the group that was not was found not to be response to which was Brandstetter, um, one of the things that they said in their cover note, and I'm just curious whether you think this is valid at all, is that, well, if you just pick one, as opposed to coming up with a concept and then having several entities compete for it, you're not going to get um, a contractor essentially kind of really trying to get an efficient price because at that point it's almost like a sole source contract. So how would you, is there validity to that? I'm sure there's a validity to it. The approach that we are proposed for this um, project is not unusual. I mean, it's, it's used in country or um, municipalities across the country. Um, and there's always a risk where the city will not negotiate to its best interest yeah. throughout this process. Yeah. But it is a negotiation process where the city is an active partner. Because of the recreational component of it, mm -hmm. it's not us just selling land and getting a mixed-use pro property that increases the property tax base. It's getting an amenity that we will own whatever that ownership form may take. So there will be an ongoing negotiation throughout this process in terms of what makes the most sense for both the development team that we're partnering with and the city as the, from your fiduciary responsibility as representative of the community. Mm. So I guess I would just say, and, I, and that this is uh, spinning off of what Council Member Mail said, you know, I do think it would be a stretch for us, and we just approved, uh, you know, this bond earlier tonight, to as I see it just sitting here today to commit some uh, additional very significant amounts of money toward this other than sort of running the programs here. And so I, I just feel like before too long, if that's where we are, we ought to let these companies know that because I would hate to see a long process where some other company spends all this time coming up with this big sort of partnership thing that would require us to spend very substantial amounts of money, which I just think realistically doesn't really seem to be in the cards for us right now. So um, that's just 
my, I don't know when that, it would be appropriate for that to occur, but I just think that would be something that would be important. Well, I guess for me, I think it's, if we have some of the groups come before the council, which I think is what we were planning to do, whether it's two or four, we can decide. I think those are questions, at least I was prepared to ask. Um, I, I, so, I think I, having yeah. more than just two sounds sounds good. So I would just associate myself with that. With idea. the four, having yeah, all four. Yeah, yeah. I think okay. so. Councilmember Thanks. Smith. Thank you. Uh, I'd just like to say, Ms. Danes, uh, I appreciate the process. Uh, I like the openness of it in letting us define what we want, but also having a group of developers and mostly associated with affordable housing as our potential partners, right? Uh, since council has made affordable housing a priority, uh, I think the site has to have affordable housing on it. And I also believe that it has to have some type of recreation type center. How we get there, I think, is you know what we're trying to figure out now. But the only way we can do that is we have to start these conversations. <coughs> you know, if you look at Tacoma Junction, now we're on year two, year three. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been a while. It, it's <laughs> been a long time to, to move that little site forward, right? And, you know, that's just the nature of these projects. So we have to start talking mm -hmm. to the developers now to see if we can come to some type of agreement and bring on the community and let them work with us and work with the developer and try to find... A, a product that everybody is going to at least kind of support or have some support for it, right? I would like to know, you picked the first two, MHP and CPDC, and they're both owners in my ward. The third and fourth uh, respondents to the RFP, is there a huge gap between those two? two and three and four, or are they close to one and two? MHP came out far and above. I mean, the, 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 the differences between the proposals is really tight because as Council Member Schultz indicated, um, it's fairly subjective and they were all um, quite strong in different ways. Um, Montgomery Housing Partnership um, came out higher than um, CPDC, and then after that, it's fairly close as far as the scoring is concerned. So there's not a dramatic uh, difference, yeah. but um, there is a significant difference between um, MHP and CPDC. We opted to bring in CPDC because they have a different experience and um, thought it would be good to give the council options. It, you know, some of my colleagues have talked about us actually putting money into the to the deal. MHP and CPDC do multi-million dollar projects all the time and sometimes the, the county is a partner and uh, you know the state is usually a partner in these projects. Uh, is it possible that we could lean on the county and have them provide more of the financial support uh, that's required for a project like this uh, and you know, exchange for us meeting their uh, affordable housing um, requirement, you know, because there's that report that just came out that the county needs thousands and thousands of units, uh, affordable housing units, and this would, it wouldn't be a huge chunk out of that, but, I mean, we would be moving in the right direction. I think it would be difficult to ask for money without a defined project. Um, I also think it's important for the council to um, uh, remember that part of this whole process is exchanging it. Because right now, you don't own the building and you don't own the land. Um, despite its idiosyncrasies, it is a fairly valuable piece of property, I believe. And the county is offering to give it to you in exchange for a very tiny, less valuable piece of residential property in the middle of an undeveloped area. Um, so while there's always an opportunity to go and ask the, the county to partner with us on this project, um, I think it would be challenging at this point in time without it 
the project itself being better defined, i.e., we're going to build 75 affordable housing units on here. Right, right, right. Um, as far as each of the respondents, um, they all have a strong uh, portfolio uh, with a very significant value associated with them and large numbers of uh, residential units, if um, is the common denominator between them all. Okay, thank you. Councilmember Schultz, and then I'll I, I would, I think I can, li listening to what my colleagues have been saying here, s summarize what I, th what I think we, where we need to be going with this thing. And I think where we are, what we've gotten so far is exactly what we wanted to get. And I appreciate it, the, this whole concept of a letter of interest, which I didn't really understand at the beginning, uh, to, be, uh, to be fair uh, to you. Uh, but I think that we, what I would like us to do would be to invite all four of these back and basically say to them that we've narrowed the group, all the, all the responses down, and you're the last, the top four. And going forward here, we're, we're, we're setting, some, we're giving you some new parameters. And that one of those parameters is, is that as a partner, our, our ability to be a financial partner in this thing is limited. Uh, and that's, that is a fact. And uh, if you're still interested, then what we would like you to do is to come back to us with a, with a theoretical project that you would be able to build on, uh, fi fi uh, with, with the financing that you're capable as an organization of, of raising, uh, whether it's public financing or private financing. I mean, <coughs> You know, equity partners or or bank financing, uh, and show us the kind of project that you think could be built on that project on that site, which is basically the same as saying that we need you to be able to demonstrate to us that you can build a project that will work out financially for you, because it's not you can't depend on the city of Tacoma Park to make it work financially for you. Uh, because it's 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 going to, and so if if Orlo or one of those came up with a five-story project, uh, and and they may say, well, gee, if that's uh, I'm not sure if they're the right ones I'm talking, you know, may, maybe we we could, if that's the case, we would do it differently. We would have to maybe make it a seven-story project or have a, X number of of, of uh, affordable units there instead of Y number of affordable units. Uh, because my concern is, is that if we narrow it down this July to just one, and then that, then it turns out that well, f when we get down to the brass tax dollar-wise, they're not going to be able to do it, um, given the city's limitations. Then, then we're going to have to go back to the other three and just sort of say, well, how about one of you guys can we'll, we'll pick this one? And, and I'm not sure that's that I think. We're going to lose a lot of time uh, and attention because by that time they may say, a few of them might say, well, we're not interested anymore. So I, I, I don't see that we can go any further until we introduce the, the financing parameters into the equation and have all four of them digest that and come back with something that shows that, yes, they can do something conceptually that would work. Uh, for for what for our what our goals are in terms of mixed mixed use uh, and all the parameters that we've already laid out and so we that we we have articulated and that we are going to continue to uh, hold on to. Councilmember Christie and then Councilmember Sands. Thanks. Um, thank you, Ms. Staines, for this presentation. This, today, I had an opportunity to look at the uh, the responses uh, on the online, and I would just say uh, I would like to associate myself with my colleagues and their comments. I think the goal that I always envisioned of being this, why we went down this road, was to look to how we can continue to expand. Um, recreational opportunities for young people in our community. I know we've now ventured into a discussion of a mixed-use place that has affordable housing, which is frankly a 
something that's near and dear to my heart, but I still maintain the primary objective of improving recreational opportunity. Um, you know, I think my, I, like many other residents, is, am sick and tired of having to go up to Germantown to a nice recreational center and pay five or six dollars for my family to enjoy time because the county spends more money up county than it does down here. Uh, and we have this opportunity. I think we owe it to the residents in this community that utilize this facility, this, frankly, facility that needs a lot of work to... Uh, to see through this plan, and I have no objection to how my colleagues want to handle it, which is be very honest with these four finalists about our limitations as a city. However, our interest in trying to make this work in some creative way where our financial burden may be low, but we can work to, if we're going to talk about Match.com, we'll marry them with other, uh, you know, entities. And Because if we're going to sit around here waiting for the county, this building will fall apart. Um, so I think from my perspective, we owe it, since we started this process, to see it through the end. And there may come a point that financially it doesn't make sense for us, but at least we would be in a position to, uh, to articulate to our residents that we've gone as far, as far as we have. Um, but I still believe that there's a way to get it done. Um, I just think that we have to be creative and we have to uh, task these companies or entities to be creative with us. And as long as we have an honest discussion about that with community input, um, I think this is a more creative way of doing it than sitting here waiting for the county because that's never going to happen. So uh, I appreciate the plan that you've laid out and I support it and that's how I'd like to approach it as well. So I think in terms of um, next steps is um, I'm hearing a majority of the colleagues would like to see all four of the um, people uh, who have proposed um, and see if they're available on the evening of the 12th. We'll move some things around um, on that agenda that night. Um, and um, you may be already thinking this, Ms. Daines, but given what a number of the council members discussed regarding the finances and things, it's just giving folks uh, a heads up on that um, prior um, to that if they have any thoughts before they come to see us on July 12th. So just to clarify for my own purposes, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, the council is interested in pursuing this. The primary interest is still the recreational component. Yeah. But in terms of capital investment, the amount of resources that you would anticipate bringing to the table would be fairly limited. That That's correct? what I heard from folks. The only tweak I would make is the importance of affordable housing has also so, been. Um, mixed-use project with the recreational component where the city is um, uh, not the primary financer or even a okay got it mm -hmm. I think that was the, and the, the majority and the, and the recreational component is TBD we don't we don't know whether that's a recreational component or a recreational component right so, so what I may ask them, and I'm kind of thinking out loud, just yeah. so you guys know what I'm um, got to say, to see if they would be open or receptive to working with the city to develop this project that's designed jointly, and enter into like a long-term lease arrangement or something like that, mm -hmm. where there's not a big capital investment at the front end, right. but you have a longer um, financial obligation over time because of the to offset the cost of constructing the project as a mm -hmm. whole. Because even if you factor in the value of the land, the cost of construction and operating and the revenue that you receive from um, affordable housing is fairly tight. Right. Yeah. I, mean, yeah. I think that was the sense of what people were saying okay. um, this evening. And I imagine some of these folks are probably watching our council meeting or we'll go back and watch. Uh, a couple of them are. I know. Yes. Yeah. Watching our council meeting so they can see for themselves how but we said it. But we're not live, are we? Yeah, they are. We, we, live we, on TV? we are not live no. right now. Oh, we're not live? No, we were oh. unable My to go live. My wife just said, Where's your, why aren't you on TV? Oh. She sent me a text. <laughs> so I guess, I guess it didn't it work tonight. It will be watching, yeah. <laughs> Could I just we add can't one, be watching more, right one more yeah. um, addition to this? Not, it doesn't change anything we've just discussed, but to, to Councilmember Smith's comments about the county and, and uh, Councilmember Grishy's, I, I guess I see this as partly we have an important county election coming up. We know that, the, that affordable housing is important to the county and the 
points uh, Councilmember Krishi made about recreation disparities, recreation service disparities in the county is accurate. Um, and so I feel like what we've done to this point and what we'll do after the next meeting is we basically made options more real for the county themselves to think about this as a viable op opportunity. So for me, if we got to a point in the future where we updated both the county council, the county executive, and the relevant county departments and said, hey, just so you know, this is where this project is right now. There's these four options, which all look like they have a potentially viable future, and you know, this is where, and the county were to say, we're excited about that, and this became a county-driven process to build and improve facilities. Now, that may be a small chance, um, but nonetheless, if that option were possible, I would be excited about that. So I just, my, my suggestion is that as we move forward and as we understand options, we also think about how to keep updating our county colleagues so that they understand uh, you know, what, what potential the project could provide to them. Yeah. I agree with that. We've been doing that at the staff level mm -hmm. because whatever happens, they have to agree to it. Um, yeah. Whatever you can do at the count, with the council. Yeah, I'm just itself, suggesting we, we add those two other pieces to it. Mm -hmm. Great. All right. Then we're done for the night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.